Uh, Mr. Speaker, I beg to move the following motion, that the Senate expresses its deep sadness at the death on the 15th of February 2021 of Honorable Mohammed Yusuf Haji, the, Senate, the Senator for Garissa County and Chairperson of the Standing Committee on National Security, Defense and Foreign Relations, records its appreciation for his contribution to public service spanning over six decades, recognizes the high esteem in which he was held by colleagues from all, part, all the parties and the principled, dedicated, and considered manner he undertook his duties and offers its profound sympathy and condolences to his family, friends, and the nation. Now, Mr. Speaker, before I go to the uh, content of my, my speech, really, in regard to our dear distinguished Senator for Garissa, Senator Mohammed Yusuf Haji. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I, I thought very deeply about this matter because never in the history of Parliament since independence, even the old Legislative Council, has there been a motion of condolence moved either in the previous Senate, the current Senate, or in the life of the National Assembly. But Mr. Speaker, having checked the practice in other jurisdictions, uh, particularly in the Commonwealth, uh, I found that in Australia, uh, whenever there is the death of the Governor General, who is a representative of the Queen in, in, in uh, Australia, or the Prime Minister, or a Senator, or a member of the National uh, Assembly, or any distinguished person, then the National Assembly of the Senate would record its appreciation in a formal motion, as opposed to the matter uh, being a, a reaction or a, uh, a, a debate after the Speaker has, uh, has announced the death of a particular member or a particular person, which has been the practice here. And indeed, Mr. Speaker, we have done it now in this uh, Senate for two occasions. Uh, I also found that in the House of Commons and, and the, in the UK Parliament, uh, there are instances when there's been a death of a member of the royal household, uh, which means the Queen's uh, family or the royalty, or other distinguished members of the Sen of, of, of both houses, that there have been practices in the, uh, in the past where indeed a motion has, has been moved and actually a resolution, because this is a motion, there's a resolution that is made at the end. So I thought that in regard to Senator Haji, instead of just a general debate, there should be an expression on which the question is put to the, uh, to the Senate that indeed we have resolved and is recorded as a resolution of the House uh, that uh, we appreciate the life and service of our dear uh, Senator, and those, those thanks and sympathies uh, be, then be submitted to, to the family uh, as a Hansard, as a record of the Hansard, and probably with a note from, from the Speaker. Now, the question may be asked, why Senator Haji? And I, and I want to be very open about this, and if you look at the papers today, uh, there are a lot of things which have been said about Senator Haji. But I, I'm, I want to make a personal testimony of somebody I've known for a very long time, and uh, probably unknown to many members in this house. If ever there was somebody who was concerned about uh, the business in the house being transacted in an open uh, manner, without restriction, uh, and to have debate without any fear, uh, because sometimes when you debate, it, it, it looks like somebody is holding a hammer on you. If there's anybody who enjoyed an open debate, it was Senator Haji. And many times when he had said something uh, that he didn't like, he would take it in, in good spirit, cross the floor, uh, and tell me as much. Uh, but he would not fail to appreciate my right 
to say what, what he's saying. And there are times when uh, Senator Haji probably would say something about me uh, that he, he thought, uh, he had second thoughts about it, he would come back and, and, and tell me about it, that you know, this, this, is, the, the, this is not right and uh, I didn't mean to, mean to say so. So the, the openness of Senator Haji, the truthfulness of Senator Haji, and the dedication to serve this country, uh, for me, is without example. And I'm saying without example, because if you look at the instances where people have probably raised questions about the conduct, the conduct of Senator Haji, you would find he was given the most difficult responsibilities. When he came to Nyanza as a provincial commissioner, no, no, as a DC in Kisumu or Siaya, it is because something was going in that area that uh, other public officials would find it very difficult to, to deal with. And uh, for the uh, purposes of my senator, distinguished senator from Kericho, I know at one time when there was a lot of border clashes, and of course Senator Ota is here, uh, between Yakach and Belgut. And it went on for quite a long time. And it, it was eventually decided that it's Senator Haji would be the right person to take and uh, be a peacemaker uh, when there were those conflicts going on uh, between those two provinces and two districts. And in Rift Valley, I think he was placed there by the late president, but because of that reason, because he was a peacemaker, uh, and the expanse of that uh, province uh, from Ethiopia, Sudan, going to Tanzania, it was not an easy place in which to, uh, you know, administer justice and uh, be the chief res representative of central government in that area. And we know what Senator Haji did, and I think uh, the leader of majority was telling me of an instance um, in, uh, uh, concerning him uh, as a person in respect of elections where he was being rigged out, uh, and Sen Senator Haji stood out for him. Uh, before the late President uh, 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 Moy. And of course, Mr. Speaker, you gave us another example in, um, in, 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 in Kilgoris yeah, uh, and Transoya. Yeah, and uh, come the fight towards multipartism uh, in Northern Kenya and Marsabit, again, when there were clashes there. Uh, uh, President Kibaki, uh, chose him and uh, uh, Speaker Caparo to go and try and resolve the issues that are, were going on in Marsabit and other parts of the northern eastern, uh, no, I mean, east, northern part of eastern province. And in the region, uh, in, in the uh, relations that uh, we have not quite achieved peace as yet, but uh, in the region um, uh, between Kenya and Somalia, you know, the, our operations in, in Somalia, which is in the context of peacemaking, he played a very big role. And I want to say when Senator Haji, I think he's the only person who has, had been, has been an acting minister for defense, no, a minister for defense, an acting minister for, inter, for the interior, and an acting minister for foreign affairs. And in that, a responsibility, I, I accompanied him to Ethiopia uh, when we had to, uh, at that time he was just acting Minister for Defense and, and, the, and uh, Foreign Affairs, and we were there with the late uh, Senator, I mean, uh, uh, late Vice President and Minister there, on, uh, later on Saitoti. And his pre presentation, I mean, when we were meeting the, our counterparts in, in Ethiopia, he, 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 he occupied the whole room. We could feel him in the whole room. And the legalism that some of us tried to bring, he put it in direct, you know, words that it is either peace uh, or no peace, but peace requires peacemakers, and both governments might be dedicated towards creating peace between Ethiopia and, and Kenya. At that time, there was a little problem between uh, between Kenya and Ethiopia uh, at Moyale and so on. 
So he has been felt everywhere in this, in this, in this republic. And of course, as chairman of, uh, uh, of uh, national security, uh, defense and foreign relations, uh, his job speaks for itself. I, I need not say anything more because he was a chair of that committee for these two terms of, uh, I mean, the previous Senate and the current Senate. And I remember when I was a member at the first inauguration of that Senate, when we went for the elections, and I think uh, the, minority, the majority, uh, deputy majority leader was there. Uh, it was a time when contestation was at its highest. Uh, we were fighting in the elections of committees. And in all the committees, the people were fighting for these positions. But when it came to this very critical committee, and uh, Senator Wetangula was in that committee, Senator uh, Fatuma Dulo and, and, and myself, Senator Ongoro, uh, we decided that, you know, nobody should put his name against Senator Haji. And that committee operated in a very bipartisan manner. And I cannot forget when we went as a delegation to the Philippines in Manila. You know, Senator Haji wanted us to share a meal at the end of every day at his expense. We, we tried, and he would insist, uh, you know, he would insist that uh, although there was other people in the delegation and uh, the parliament had provided for everything, he would insist that he would go to a restaurant of his choice, and of course that would not be quite an ordinary restaurant. And I was wondering, this Senator Haji, who in his bearing, he lives in a very simple way, in a very simple way. He has no complications, even his abode uh, when out there, in very simple circumstances, that we insist that uh, we go to the most expensive restaurant. And I think Senator Fatuma Dulo, you remember that. And not once, twice. And uh, enjoy not only the discussions we're having with our counterparts in the Philippines, but also seeing that country for what it is and make comparisons. Now, Mr. Speaker, he was therefore a great peacemaker. Contrary to a lot of people who may want to argue otherwise, uh, whenever you have occupied that position of Minister for Interior and some of the responsibilities you were given. Um, you know, it is very difficult to come out without criticism. And uh, I can urge you, look at the people who have been Ministers for Interior. Uh, most of them, we have had problems with them. Uh, each one of them, we have had problems. But the short period when he was Minister for Interior and when he was an Assistant Minister in that uh, department, after the elections in 1997, when he was nominated uh, to the National Assembly, he, he served with decorum, he served uh, with, uh, uh, you know, uh, humility, and he served knowing that uh, Ke Kenya, as many people have said before, that Kenya is bigger than any one of us, is greater than any one of us. So we mourn a great Kenyan, and uh, a great human being. And somebody, somebody who loved the truth. You know, Senator Haji really loved the truth. Loved the truth to his bone and soul. And if you, if you, have, any, if you have any doubts about that, when you are debating the formula, uh, to the end, he stuck to where he was. And he will tell you in the face that in this one, and this is something good for Kenya. We tried to have meetings with him, and he told me the only solution, and I think the leader of majority is my witness, that the solution lies with the executive. But if this is the money they are bringing before the uh, Senate uh, for purposes of sending it to the, uh, uh, to the counties, then uh, the, the solution uh, we should not waste our time, you know, talking to him uh, because he, he would not change. And those days, whenever I, I saw Senator Haji missing in the House and we were about to vote, and I saw Falhada around, Senator Falhada, I knew what the vote <laughs> was going to be. Yeah, it was going to be. 
and I think during that debate of, uh, of the formula, I, I loved it. I mean, I mean, I've taken a contrary position. But I think that is the time when I really felt we were in, in a house in which reason and debate would prevail. And if there was an, any other thing, you know, <laughs> in the, on the sidelines, the core of the issue that was before us, to the extent that uh, we were divided as, on matters of principle, I really admired it. And that Senator Haji would stand firm to the position that he had taken. I, I think that was a beautiful thing for me. And I'll remember him uh, for that. And uh, eventually, he then had this great responsibility about the Building Bridges Initiative. I think he is not here to speak for himself now, but as co-chair, I think there are challenges and things that we needed to know from him. Uh, because uh, knowing those things, we, we, the country will be better informed. This debate uh, and, and what is happening in the county assemblies probably is happening without his contribution. But I, I know as a matter of fact, and this I'm saying, for the country to hear, that if there was anything in that document that uh, Senator Haji did not agree to, th then we are cast. Because <laughs> uh, he, he did not want uh, things that uh, uh, were done uh, differently. Uh, but he is not there to, to speak to us about it. And probably, now this is just my wishful thinking, if there was any other way of Ijara getting a constituency, I, I, would, I, would, I, would, I would try to find a way. <laughs> I would try to find a way. Yeah, because he really fought hard selflessly. And, and I think, in fact, Ijara deserved to get that constituency. He was not just asking for it because of uh, love of community, but I think he deserved it. Now, finally, Mr. Speaker, I just wanted to say something in the spirit of Senator Hajj, and it's about something that I'm beginning to see in this country that we must be very careful about. You know, in the Constitution, there is protected speech, which has got certain limitations. And those limitations I'm quite, I'm quite happy about, that uh, uh, those limitations should continue to be there. But the moment we begin to restrict speech or begin to criminalize speech, then we are talking about another country. And I want to say that from the bottom of my heart. I, I want this country to remember that in the laws of Kenya, there was a law of sedition. Law of sedition. You say anything, you are taken to court, you are not given bail because the minimum sentence was 10 years. And uh, until your case is resolved, you remain in, in detention. And I'm saying I, I was a victim. One time I was arrested and taken to Kisi on a charge of sedition. And then taken to Ogembo. Because in Kisi, there was so much noise. And then from Ogembo, I was taken to to Kilgoris, and council, uh, senior council Mwite would come there to Kilgoris to come and represent, for me, represent me. So in as much as we don't like what people are saying, and you don't have to like what I'm saying. You don't, you don't have to like it. And you'll be a fool to like what I say all the time. It means your mind is not working. But to criminalize what somebody is saying, I think that would be a great betrayal to the people of Kenya who fought so hard. First of all, to get rid of the, those laws like sedition. Even regard to the law to, uh, regarding incitement, his constitutionality has been challenged. Uh, so I would want, in the spirit of Senator Haji, because he was a Democrat, he was open to plead to this country that uh, we need a degree of tolerance uh, to drive us forward. There was a great American judge 
who said the remedy to be applied in circumstances where you may not like what somebody is saying is more speech, not enforced silence. And then he, had, he further said the remed, remedy for speech that is false is speech that is true. So whenever somebody says anything you don't like or you think is false, the remedy is not to be oppressive or overbearing, but speak the truth. And then you'll have gotten rid of the whole idea. So in a nutshell, what I'm not trying to say, I'm trying to say that the spirit of this great man, who was a peacemaker, in fact, when he was making, speak, uh, uh, making peace, he had to hear people saying things from both sides. And I know uh, my, my Senator Fatuma Dula has been a peacemaker in, uh, in, in another capacity. And, and, and uh, of course, uh, that is a name that uh, she's given when she's out there. <laughs> Not when we were before the floor of the house. But I hope, I hope in all honesty that we build this country to be a democratic and open society. As a bottom line, open democratic society. And I think that is what, from what I can gather in my association and relationship with Senator Haji, the man loved the truth, loved the truth. Why do people in this country fear the truth so much? So much that something little is said and the whole place is burning. Yeah? If you find it, then we should not even be in the business of politics. Yeah? I, I have had Senator, I mean this president who has gone in, in the United States of America, Trump, used to call people all sorts of names. But you counter it with what you think is right. So whereas I don't agree with a lot of people on the side opposite, but when they make a point, I want to appreciate. And when they don't make it, then I make a contrary point. That is called the doctrine of counter speech. It's a great legal doctrine that uh, if you live in a society where people are in art, eh? like one time uh, the famous member of parliament nominated from Nakuru, uh, Chotara, Honorable Chotara, he, he had two propositions that, uh, why do we have elections? Since the President Moi is the one who knows a bad man or a good man, <laughs> he should not wake up in the morning and say, Morko Men, you are senator for Mombasa. Uh, uh, Fatou Madulo, you are senator for CIA. Why do we uh, wa waste time? And, and then he said that, um, you know, this business of coming to parliament and talking the whole day, and even some people who cannot even make a, a razor blade or a pin, and we have a garage where we can repair vehicles. He was saying this because you know there were some people in parliament known as the, the seven beard sisters who most of the time had nothing uh, that you could show materially. Yeah, so I may have nothing, but my mind may be a, a bank of information that you should not allow me to take that bank to the grave. Yeah, you, you better listen to it. So uh, Mr. Speaker, without taking a, a lot of time, uh, I, w I, I wish and I hope that c this house can join me in uh, paying tribute to this great Kenyan and uh, at the end that uh, we send these profound sympathies and condol condolences to the family of Senator Mohammed Yusuf Haji. What a man and I hope from that stock, where he came from, that greater people will come to help this nation become a greater nation. I thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I move. Yeah. I ask the majority leader to second.
You know, Mr. Speaker, I beg to second. The speaker, you know, in a motion like this where uh, all members would like to participate and say something, it's very special, we'll try and make it uh, short. The speaker, this uh, gentleman that we speak about today uh, has, has a very checkered uh, career. His life, everybody has spoken about the speaker, is that he was soft-spoken. And many times he never shouted above anybody's uh, uh, voice. He was soft-spoken, but whatever he said, uh, the speaker, you would listen and you would definitely respect. At the age of 80, we've lost him, in my view, early. We needed for him to be there. But, Mr. Speaker, in the Muslim religion, uh, that's God's timing. And also in any religion, we leave that to God. One of the very first pastoralists to rise in the ranks of provincial administration was Yusuf Haji, very young. And actually, Mr. Speaker, one of the most educated, even at that time, uh, were trained, well-trained. And coming from a place where he didn't have very many, very many to support him in terms of tribe, he excelled in relating to other people everywhere he went. And that was one of the biggest contributions, one of the biggest uh, assets, uh, Mr. Speaker, of his character, is that he then learned to operate in any setting, including uh, any community where he went to. Uh, and, and so that, in itself, it tells you what kind of person uh, that Yusuf Haji is. But Mr. Speaker, the reason why we have a special, a special tribute, a moment of tribute for Yusuf Haji, and I, I, I don't know whether my, uh, I can be heard. All right. Is, 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 is that Mr. Speaker, while a lot of us appreciate the way that our, our, our Muslim brothers and sisters do their funerals, Mr. Speaker, and conclude so quickly. While we admire that, it also does not give time for closure. And Mr. Speaker, people would like to, people would like to have time to speak about a person and mourn that person longer. And so, Mr. Speaker, this is why this special sitting is important. Because we have already buried uh, Yusuf Haji, but now you are giving us an opportunity, the House is giving us an opportunity for that closure, for us as friends, for us as people who have grown with him, to then eulogize this great guy, this great man. And so, Mr. Speaker, that is one of the reasons why we have this session today. Um, the other reason, Mr. Speaker, is that in, in this particular tradition, the, the Islamic tradition, it is supposed, it is, uh, it is um, traditional to ask, like we were asked today at his residence, to ask, is there anyone who owes anything to use of Haji? And, and so this is a good forum, Mr. Speaker. It's a good forum then to say, no, like me personally, I have, he owes me nothing, and I don't know who in this house that Yusuf Haji would have owed anything. Even forgiveness, he owes me nothing. In fact, Mr. Speaker, in my career as a politician, my most difficult times uh, as a politician, uh, uh, Yusuf Haji was the provincial commissioner in Rift Valley. But he, he was so sympathetic to me because I was so young and, and I, I, I was naive, Mr. Speaker, basically at the time when uh, the system did not allow for questioning anything, that I was, I was there, Mr. Speaker, uh, <laughs> you know, asking things which were not supposed to be asked. Like, Mr. Speaker, when I was expelled from Kanu in, in, uh, in 1988, Mr. Speaker, my first election, uh, Yusuf Haji was, was there. But he was so sympathetic, and he would tell me, you know, go slowly, Kijana, go slowly. I mean, I didn't know what that meant. I had just, I had just finished graduate school, I had a master's degree, I thought I would question everything. But Mr. Speaker, that was not to be. And so when I was uh, eventually uh, uh, expelled, And Mr. Speaker, you know, you need to understand that I was expelled the same year I was elected. So <laughs> it's, it's, not like, it's not like I had a long time to serve. 
as well from the, the only party in the country. And, and, Mr. Speaker, the truth is, you become a pariah when you're expelled. And Yusuf Haji was the administrator, but that moment of a, a, a victimizing you, he didn't do that. And, and so I was able then, Mr. Speaker, to organize myself and, and, and get out of the country uh, without much harassment. And, and so, Mr. Speaker, I just want to say that uh, here is a man who had the authority even to order my arrest. He had the authority to do whatever he wanted to do, but did not use that against uh, some of us. Also, Mr. Speaker, during that time, the Pokot community ha had been harassed very much uh, in terms of military operations. Um, some of you are hearing about military operations now. Uh, this is something that, that was used quite a bit on the Pokot community. And Yusuf Haji, who was the PC at the time, uh, it really handled this thing in a very humane way. And uh, he, 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 although a lot of, a lot of times the, the leaders were arrested, but they, he handled it in a very humane, humane way. And so I remember him as a man who, of, of, who could actually uh, give time to leaders and listen to leaders, even if those of us were branded uh, uh, badly at the time. And so in respect of the question whether I owe it, I, I owe, he owes me anything, absolutely nothing. And accept, accept gratitude. And, and, and Mr. Speaker, every time that we, we had issues, even in the personal lives, and you spoke to Yusuf Haji, uh, he listened to you, he gave you advice which was fatherly. The other thing I must say is that he really gave his family uh, a very good life. He gave his family education, his children. And which is, which is, which is and, and, and like Nyachai, when we spoke about Nyachai and his play in, uh, in Nyachai yesterday, the day before, yeah, yesterday. And the speaker, these were very young people. Being, Nyachai being a PC at 32 years old, right? those are very young people. And yet, Mr. Speaker, they were, they were able to operate under those conditions. And so Yusuf Haji and his, his, his um, peers at that time were very well prepared and very well trained. And so th one thing which is thankful is that he prepared his family for, for life, and therefore he prepared his people as well, the people of Garissa, and generally the people of Northeastern. So he is a man who cared beyond his own family and cared beyond um, his own uh, small constituency. The speaker, for the, one of the last examples I'll give uh, is, uh, and I think it's the one that Minority Leader has said, in 1997, in 1997, Mr. Speaker, I came back to Kano, and, uh, and, and I ran for the Member of Parliament for Kachaliba constituency under Kano. Those, ways, those days, the nominations were still Mulolongo, uh, and, and those days, Mulolongo nominations, the Speaker, could go either way. And uh, in those days, you are a DO, I think you realize, the DOs were also presiding officers, and the DCs, I think, were the returning officers. Um, and, and so, no, the returning officers and the other one is presiding officers. I don't know which one was bigger than which. But um, mine was unique because the, the late uh, former president uh, had a candidate he liked very much at the time. It was called Peter Nangole. And he was an assistant minister and I was running against him. And Haji was the PC. And the speaker, when I, I, I won that nomination, it was a problem for the country and for the party because I was not supposed to win that nomination. So, so the DO, Mr. Speaker of Kachaliba, uh, uh, you called the DC and said, there's a problem. I said, what's the problem? Uh, the assistant minister has been beaten. And the DC, DC said, wait for me here. Don't, don't, don't do anything, don't announce. Let me call the PC. And guess who was the PC? Yusuf Haji. And so the DC now calls the PC, and the PC says, uh, uh, the, uh, 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 wait, don't announce. Let me call the president. And, and, and Mr. Speaker, uh, in the end, when the PC now goes to see the president, uh, and, and, and the president was told that there was a problem in Kachaliba, uh, the former president, the, the, the President Moy, uh, it so happened that uh, PC Haji and my good friend Lotodo were together. 
And they spoke very nicely of me, Mr. Speaker. They said, at Kijana Simbaya Sana. In Kiswahili meaning I was not a very bad uh, young man. And, uh, which is true up to today, Mr. Speaker. I'm not a very bad young man. <laughs> And so, <laughs> and so, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, he was he was a PC, but he was a bit soft, and he understood how to put things. And so, the result was announced, and the rest, Mr. Speaker, was history. I served as the MP for Kachalima for the next 15 years, nonstop. So it was important that uh, I speak very highly of a man who spoke very softly, but a very strong and very very powerful. What else can I say about this gentleman, Mr. Speaker, apart from being a father figure? Um, he also, Mr. Speaker, supported the political system. And I think, Mr. Speaker, if you look at uh, our president today, Uhuru Kenyatta, if you look at the whole of yesterday, Mr. Speaker, dealing with the situation with Nyachai, and then later in the evening dealing with the situation uh, with uh, Yusuf Haji, Mr. Speaker, the, what we saw was a very emotional uh, sit, uh, uh, setting, and uh, the, because Yusuf Haji stood very true and very faithful to the system and to the president, the current president, he was a father figure to him, and just like to me and others. And so, Mr. Speaker, we speak of a man who was true when he was in power, and even Mr. Speaker, as a nominated member of parliament, when he came, and you know, nominated members of parliament did not have much power, uh, Mr. Speaker, but he was consulted more. And I think that's what led to his being elected uh, to Ijara and then the following uh, election. And so, Mr. Speaker, uh, we give this opportunity for us to, to, to bring closure to losing a great friend and a great mentor and a man who stayed true, like uh, my minority was saying, true to truth. Uh, one, one time, Mr. Speaker, when we were discussing the formula, uh, he's used very, very strong words. And he said, I'd rather die than to compromise. Those are the words he used. It was very, very strong. And so, Mr. Speaker, for a man like that, it's a great loss. And yet, again, as uh, my friend, minority leader said, there is probably more where that came from, that stock. And so we wish the people of Garissa uh, uh, God's grace and protection, his family, especially, Mr. Speaker, some of his boys whom we know that they may be, Mr. Speaker, continue to keep the family together and uh, may God rest his soul in eternal peace. I thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I second. Honorable, honorable Senators, I now put the question, propose, sorry, the question, which is that the Senate expresses its deep sadness at the death on 15th February 2021 of Honorable Muhammad Yusuf Haji, the Senator for Garissa County and Chairperson of the Standing Committee on National Security, Defense and Foreign, Rec uh, Foreign Relations, records its, records its appreciation for his contribution to public service spanning over six decades, recognizing him high esteem in which he was held by colleagues from all parties and the principled, dedicated and considered manner he undertook his duties and offers its profound sympathy and condolences to his family, friends, and the nation. Senator Haniri. Uh, sorry, um, I realize all of us want to say something. So I'll seek your indulgence that we, each one takes five minutes. Just put your thoughts together, thought process together, summarize, and use five minutes. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank you for this opportunity and uh, just before I make my tribute, I want to thank uh, Senator Orengo. Mr. Speaker, hey, hey, you know, asking things which you are not supposed to be asked. Like Mr. Speaker, when I was expelled from Kanu in, in, uh, in 1988, Mr. Speaker, my first election, uh, Yusuf Haji was, was there, but he was so sympathetic and he would tell me you know, go slowly, Kijana. Go slowly. I mean, I didn't know what that meant. I had just, I had just finished graduate school. I had a master's degree. I thought I would question everything. 
But Mr. Speaker, that was not to be. And so when I was uh, eventually uh, uh, expelled, and Mr. Speaker, you know, you need to understand that I was expelled the same year I was elected. So <laughs> it's, it's, not like, it's not like I had a long time to serve. Expelled from the, the only party in the country. And, and, Mr. Speaker, the truth is, you become a pariah when you're expelled. And Yusuf Haji was the administrator, but that moment of a, a, a victimizing you, he didn't do that. And, and so I was able then, Mr. Speaker, to organize myself and, and, and get out of the country uh, without much harassment. And, and so, Mr. Speaker, I just want to say that uh, here is a man who had the authority even to order my arrest. He had the authority to do whatever he wanted to do, but did not use that against uh, some of us. Also, Mr. Speaker, during that time, the Pokot community ha had been harassed very much uh, in terms of military operations. Um, some of you are hearing about military operations now. Uh, this is something that, that was used quite a bit on the Pokot community. And Yusuf Haji, who was the PC at the time, uh, it really handled this thing in a very humane way. And uh, he, 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 although a lot of, a lot of times the, the leaders were arrested, but they, he handled it in a very humane, humane way. And so I remember him as a man who, of, of, who could actually uh, give time to leaders and listen to leaders, even if those of us were branded uh, uh, badly at the time. And so in respect of the question whether I owe it, I, I ho he owes me anything, absolutely nothing and accept, accept gratitude. And, and, and Mr. Speaker, every time that we, we had issues, even in the personal lives, and you spoke to Yusuf Haji, uh, he listened to you, he gave you advice which was fatherly. The other thing I must say is that he really gave his family uh, a very good life. He gave his family education, his children. And which, which is, which is and, and, and like Nyachai, and we spoke about Nyachai in, his play, in, in Nyachai yesterday, the day before, yeah, yesterday. And the speaker, these were very young people. Being, Nyachai being a PC at 32 years old, those are very young people. And yet, Mr. Speaker, they were, they were able to operate under those conditions. And so Yusuf Haji and his, his, his um, peers at that time were very well prepared and very well trained. And so th one thing which is thankful is that he prepared his family for, for life, and therefore he prepared his people as well, the people of Garissa, and generally the people of Northeastern. So he is a man who cared beyond his own family and cared beyond um, his own uh, small constituency. The speaker, for the, one of the last examples I'll give uh, is, uh, and I think it's the one that Minority Leader has said, in 1997, 1997, Mr. Speaker, I came back to Kano, and, uh, and, and I ran for the Member of Parliament for Kachaliba constituency under Kano. Those, ways, those days, the nominations were still Mulolongo, uh, and, and those days, Mulolongo nominations, the Speaker could go either way. And uh, in those days, you are a DO, I think you realize, the DOs were also presiding officers, and the DCs, I think, were the returning officers. Um, and, and so, no, the returning officers and then the other ones presiding officers. I don't know which one was bigger than which. But um, mine was unique because the, the late uh, former president uh, had a candidate he liked very much at the time. It was called Peter Nangole. And he was an assistant minister and I was running against him. And Haji was the PC. And the speaker, when I, I, I won that nomination, it was a problem for the country and for the party because I was not supposed to win that nomination. So, so the DO, Mr. Speaker of Kachaliba, uh, uh, you called the DC and said, there's a problem. I said, what's the problem? Uh, the assistant minister has been beaten. And the DC, DC said, wait for me here. Don't, don't, don't do anything. Don't announce. Let me call the PC. And guess who was the PC? Yusuf Haji. And so the DC now calls the PC, and the PC says, uh, 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 wait, don't announce. Let me call the president. 
And, and, and Mr. Speaker, uh, in the end, when the PC now goes to see the president, uh, and, and, and the president was told that there was a problem in Kachaliba, uh, the former president, uh, the, the President Moy, uh, it so happened that uh, PC Haji and my good friend Lotodo were together. And they spoke very nicely of me, Mr. Speaker. They said, at Kijana Simbaya Sana. In Kiswahili, meaning I was not a very bad uh, young man. And, uh, which is true up to today, Mr. Speaker. I'm not a very bad young man. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and so, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, he was, he was a PC, but he was a soft and he understood how to put things. And so the result was announced, and the rest, Mr. Speaker, was history. I served as the MP for Kachaliba for the next 15 years nonstop. So it was important that uh, I speak very highly of a man who spoke very softly, but a very strong and very, very powerful. What else can I say about this gentleman, Mr. Speaker, apart from being a father figure? Um, he also, Mr. Speaker, supported the political system. And I think, Mr. Speaker, if you look at uh, our president today, Uhuru Kenyatta, if you look at the whole of yesterday, Mr. Speaker, dealing with the situation with Nyachai, and then later in the evening dealing with the situation uh, with uh, Yusuf Haji, Mr. Speaker, the, what we saw was a very emotional uh, sit, uh, uh, setting. And uh, the, because Yusuf Haji stood very true and very faithful to the system and to the president, the current president. He was a father figure to him, and just like to me and others. And so, Mr. Speaker, we speak of a man who, who was true when he was in power, and even, Mr. Speaker, as a nominated member of parliament when he came. And you know, nominated members of parliament did not have much power, uh, Mr. Speaker, but he was consulted more. And I think that's what led to his being elected uh, to Ijara and then the following uh, election. And so, Mr. Speaker, uh, we give this opportunity for us to, to, to bring closure to losing a great friend and a great mentor and a man who stayed true, like uh, my, my auditor was saying, true to truth. Uh, one, one time, as a speaker, when we were discussing the formula, uh, he's used very, very strong words. And he said, I'd rather die than to compromise. Those are the words he used. It was very, very strong. And so, Mr. Speaker, for a man like that, it's a great loss, and yet, again, as uh, my friend, my minority leader said, there is probably more where that came from, that stock. And so we wish the people of Garissa uh, uh, God's grace and protection. His family, especially, Mr. Speaker, some of his boys whom we know that they may be, Mr. Speaker, continue to keep the family together and uh, may God rest his soul in eternal peace. I thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I second. Honorable, honorable Senators, I now put the question, propose, sorry, the question, which is that the Senate expresses its deep sadness at the death on 15th February 2021 of Honorable Muhammad Yusuf Haji, the Senator for Garissa County and Chairperson of the Standing Committee on National Security, Defense, and Foreign, Rec uh, Foreign Relations, records its, records its appreciation for his contribution to public service spanning over six decades, recognizing him high esteem in which he was held by colleagues from all parties and the principled, dedicated, and considered manner he undertook his duties and offers its profound sympathy and condolences to his family, friends, and the nation. Senator Haniri. Uh, sorry, um, I realize all of us want to say something. So I'll seek your indulgence that we, each one takes five minutes. Just put your thoughts together, thought process together, summarize, and use five minutes. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank you for this opportunity, and uh, just before I make my tribute, I want to thank uh, Senator Orengo for moving this motion and the proposal that he made. And uh, in a way of seconding it, Mr. Speaker, I think it's a high time that uh, we amended our standing orders to provide for this, that when a colleague 
passes on, or a head of state, or a head of government, or a prime minister, and that level, we shouldn't be making our tributes riding on your, your, your communication. There should be a proper motion put before the House, adopted, so that the hands and uh, the tributes can be sent to the families. Mr. Speaker, I think this should be taken seriously so that we amend uh, our, constitution, our, our standing orders to provide for that. Mr. Speaker, it is with a very heavy heart that I stand here this afternoon to pay my tributes to a great friend. Mr. Speaker, once again, death has robbed this country of a great leader. A leader who was forthright, honest to the core, a peacemaker, Mr. Speaker, a patriot. He was selfless, generous, and above all, Mr. Speaker, hum humble. I liked his humility. Mr. Speaker, I personally have known our departed colleague for the last 26 years. Many of you may not believe this, but I have known him for 26 years. Mr. Speaker, I knew PC Haji when I was running for my Abaya election in 1996. When James Orengo, the late Wamalwa Kijana, the late George Captain had waged a very tough war on me as the Kanu candidate, Yusuf Haji, Musalia Mudavadi, Mudiawori, and, uh, and Andrew Ligale stood with me, and that is how I came to the house, the, the, this August House, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, at that time, Kanu was synonymous with uh, the provincial administration. So Yusuf Haji, as the PC, was my lead campaigner in my first election to parliament uh, as a member of parliament for Hamisi. Mr. Speaker, he always regarded me as his son, and that is how he called me until he died, my son. Mr. Speaker, known to many, I had a close relationship to him because my own father, my own father died in the hands of Yusuf Haji. When my father was the member of parliament and uh, Yusuf Haji was the PC, I think they had been invited to a function where Yusuf Haji was the chief guest. And my father was there as the area member of parliament. And when he was called to speak and, uh, and invite the PC, my father collapsed and breathed his last. His last words were that uh, Samahani soda niliokunywa inanitatiza, and he collapsed. It is Yusuf Haji who went and picked him from that podium put him in his Land Rover, uh, the official PC's Land Rover, and drove him to Aga Khan Hospital in Kisumu, where he was pronounced dead on arrival. And Yusuf Haji always reminded me that uh, your father died in my arms while I was rushing him to hospital. That is how closely I related with uh, our good brother, father, and colleague, Yusuf Haji. I served with him in the National Assembly for a good 10 years and in this chamber for, 13 year, for, for, for eight years. So he's been my colleague for the last 18 years. And Mr. Speaker, when I say that uh, Yusuf Haji was the voice of reason, I think all of you will agree with me that uh, the old man was indeed the voice of reason when it came to debate in this house. His death leaves Senate, the Senate poorer. His death leaves this country poorer. Mr. Speaker, on my own behalf, on behalf of my family, on behalf of the people of Vihiga, and on behalf of the people of the former Western province where he served as a PC for very many years, 
I want to take this to take this opportunity to wish his family well. It is our prayer that the God will give them strength and fortitude during this very trying moment. And it is our prayer that the same God will rest his soul uh, in, eternal, in eternal peace. Fare thee well. We will miss you. We will miss your company. We will miss your contributions. And we will miss your guidance. Rest in peace. Thank you for managing your time well, Senator Murkomen. Mr. Speaker, <clears throat> I first start by thanking Senator James Orengo for coming up with this motion and for thinking through uh, the motion, but even more importantly, for his very weighty uh, contributions. Actually, Senator Orengo spoke today like the Orengo we know, Mr. Speaker, and uh, I, I enjoyed every bit of his, uh, every bit of his submissions. Uh, and. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank him for that. Number two is, Mr. Speaker, to eulogize our colleague, Senator Mohamed Yusuf Haji. Senator Mohamed Yusuf Haji had a very illustrious career, Mr. Speaker. Some of us who cannot speak in the same stature with Senator Orengo and others who just came to public service the other day, Mr. Speaker, <laughs> we do not have the similar experience like you. But you know, Senator Yusuf Haji was the PC of Rift Valley and when the word PC was synonymous to Haji for us who grew up in the Rift Valley. In fact, Mr. Speaker, when he left after 20 something years, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, everybody, anybody else who came would be asked, who is the Haji of Rift Valley? Because it became synonymous to provincial uh, commissioner's position. And Mr. Speaker, I'd like to say here that Mr. Speaker, I was so privileged and honored to, in my young years, to be able to interact and work with Senator Yusuf Haji from the time I came to this chamber in 2013. I found, Mr. Speaker, that despite the position and experience, Mr. Speaker, and the age, there was no one who was more respectful to authority, Mr. Speaker, than Senator Haji. Senator Haji, if he was a member of a, your committee and you are the chair, you knew for sure that you have a loyal member of your committee. Mr. Speaker, when I came into leadership as the Deputy Majority Leader, Senator Haji gave me maximum support and gave us who are in leadership maximum support. Even later, Mr. Speaker, when I became a Majority Leader, Senator Haji became the person I used to go to to ask for counsel, for advice. I remember one day we went with him to see the Deputy President over something that was in Carissa. And Mr. Speaker, the way he was approaching the office of the Deputy President was I, I was even shocked myself <laughs> because, Mr. Speaker, I thought I was even more uh, casual than he was. He re really respected authority. If something came from the president, Mr. Speaker, <laughs> uh, as it used to uh, most of the time, any communication I brought to this house that came from him, Senator Haji was a person who could not countermand. He would not even ask uh, for me to get evidence whether the president wanted something to be done this way or the other. He was so loyal to authority, which was, Mr. Speaker, his strength, but I, at some point I even thought it was his weakness. <laughs> because, Mr. Speaker, um, Senator Haji, when uh, I, I give you an example, Senator Haji didn't want to serve as the chair of security. But the president had told me that there is no other person who will chair security. It must be Senator Haji. So I came here and I told Senator Haji, we are making you the chair of security committee. He told me, no, 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 my son, I am now satisfied to serve. Uh, uh, let others serve. I have served long enough. Let me give an opportunity to other young people like yourself to serve. And I told him, the president, call the president and tell him you are unwilling to serve, <laughs> you know. Then he told me, if it came from the president, that's it. I'm going to take this responsibility. And he took it with a lot of humility. And I want to thank Senator Sakaja, who was his vice chair because they worked seamlessly, Mr. Speaker, and Senator Sakaja took the responsibilities uh, uh, on his behalf, like Senator Fatuma Dulo did in the last term. And Mr. Speaker, something else I learned from him is that he was able to stand firm, like Senator Orengo said, and maybe the only time I saw him stand very firm, which I was saying, Mr. Speaker, here, his loyalty was also a weakness, <laughs> because it was very difficult for him to go against the government position. 
But when it came to division of revenue, Mr. Speaker, Senator Haji was not only firm in what he believed it is for the people of the pastoralist community and the people of Garissa, but he sat here, Mr. Speaker. Even when he felt like he had some flu or something, he made sure that he sat here, even up to 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock at night, waiting for that opportunity to vote. And so I asked Senator Haji, we were walked behind here and asked Senator Haji, Senator Haji, I don't understand, there's a paradox here. You are the chair of BBI. You are the, you know, the guy of the president. But at the same time, there is a motion in this house that is supported by the, by the executive and the majority side. Not yet. My time is not enough. Is it? Okay, Mr. Speaker, okay let me finish. Yes. I didn't even see it. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I, I wish I saw the... To tell us yeah, what Haji told th you. Thank you, you two minutes, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, Mr. Speaker, it was sabotage. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, it was that paradox that I asked him. So, you are standing this way, and you are the closest man to the executive, and we are suffering. And I think we were with Matsayo and others. We told him, why don't you go and intervene on our behalf? He told me, I'm not even picking any anybody's call. I'm not taking anybody's directions. I am so firm and focused to vote for the people of Garissa. So, Speaker, maybe in, in my own confession, because Senator Haji was my friend, there were things Senator Haji was unhappy with in the BBI report. And I don't think he's the one who ordered, ordered everything in BBI. There must have been things, of course, that are compromised that came from other quarters. It was a bit of a letdown that the things we achieved as Team Kenya in these chambers, and Senator Haji participated, were found themselves, Mr. Speaker, in the BBI report in terms of the per capita income application on division of revenue. And I think, Mr. Speaker, that's something we must ponder through because if we believe that Senator Haji was a man of equity, we must also, as leaders, ensure that the things we do will make sure that they protect all communities equitably. I want to wish his family, I want to wish uh, Nordin and his brother and, and the rest of the sisters and their extended family God's grace at this very difficult time. I know, Mr. Speaker, Senator Haji's history will be forever remembered in this country, and there are things I learned from Senator Haji that I wish that, Mr. Speaker, I'll be able to apply in my personal life. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Professor Kamar. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me an opportunity to join colleagues in expressing my deepest sadness at the death of our colleague, Senator Yusuf Haji. Mr. Speaker, I want this House to know that I have known Yusuf Haji maybe for the longest time. I have known Yusuf Haji since 1983. When I was a district soil conservation officer in Transoia, and he was posted to come at a time when we had, we had had elections that created a lot of tension in Transoia. When uh, Senator Yusuf Haji joined us in Transoia, he called a meeting of heads of department, and being a district soil conservation officer, I was in that meeting. And uh, this young administrator was completely different. He told us, we must work, we must serve. At the time, Mr. Speaker, there was this district development committee that was being used to develop the county, the, the districts. And um, he redirected us to development at the time that we thought we were going to discuss elections that were, had caused a lot of tension. The peacemaker in use of Haji, you could see that early. Mr. Speaker, later in 1996, I got to know him more. When after the 1995 trip to Beijing conference, the women of Rift Valley asked me to join Mindeleo, Rift Valley Mindeleo and to chair them. I wasn't sure I was going to be able to deal with being in the university and chairing women, because it was the concept of women leadership was not clear in my mind. So I went to Yusuf Haji's office, he was then the PC, and uh, Mr. Speaker, he advised me from day one. One of the words that uh, Senator Murkomen has used 
is what Yusuf had used directly to me. And he said, the first thing, you come from the university, first things first. Respect for authority cannot be compromised in life. He said, you are coming from a very formal system, a system that has a different order. If you are coming to lead women, And um, listening is an art in this leadership. At the time, I was not very sure how I was going to discuss because women squabbling was very high. Uh, you would have women from one district uh, complaining over issues of, of a nature that would disrupt, in fact, the very uh, organization of Maendeleo Yawanawake. But he did something that was even more unique. He told me to avoid all these things as you are learning, use my boardroom for your meetings. So a young lecturer trying to be a women's leader, leading women who are more experienced in the women's movement, I used this boardroom and it made a lot of difference. What it did to me, Mr. Speaker, is that Yusuf Haji opened his, the doors of his office that I would see him before the meeting and see him after the meeting. At the end of uh, three years, I had known wi the women movement so much that uh, by the time the East African community positions were coming in, every woman in Rift Valley was saying, let's send Professor Kamar to the East African community. That's how I went there. It's because of contributions of such people, contributions of women like Fibia CEO, but it started with how I was mentored and trained by Yusuf Haji. From the time I met Yusuf Haji, I, learned, I got into a habit of consulting him on many things. In fact, the most recent one, Mr. Speaker, in the last year, I called him for advice in two occasions. But the one that really, uh, the one thing that really surprised me is that I called him from Eldoret and I said, I need advice. And he said, where are you? I said, I'm in Eldoret. He said, I'm in Carissa. And he said, when are you coming to, Eldoret, to Nairobi? I said, I'll be in Nairobi tomorrow. He said, I'll come the day after, which was on a Monday. Your time is up. The, the button, now that you are the one who will be controlling yeah. the time. <laughs> one minute. Mr. Speaker. <laughs> I just want to wind up with that one, Mr. Speaker, that he said something that really touched me for, and it will always touch me forever. He said, where are you? And I said, uh, I'm at home. He said, can I come and see you at home? I said, no, I'm coming to see you. That was amazing, because this is somebody who would go to any length. If you are in a problem, or if you are in a situation that you needed him, he would even come to you. May the Lord rest his soul in eternal peace, I sympathize with the family, and on behalf of myself, my family, and the people of Wasingishu, and Ripti Valley, where he sat for a very long time, I want to say poorly to the family. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Silva Kasanga. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this chance. Also, to eulogize our colleague and friend, Senator Yusuf Haji. I also want to thank the House leadership, Senator Orengo, for bringing this motion that has given us the opportunity to add you know, our voices uh, to this. And also, just for the fact that um, Senator Orengo's submission was so powerful, and without a doubt, I can say then I am very privileged to have rubbed shoulders with the late Senator Yusuf Haji. And I must say, as I count my blessings every morning, I count my blessings that I do rub shoulders with some of the most distinguished gentlemen in this house, and there's always something to learn from our leaders ahead of us. So I want to thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I want to say from the submissions of the leaders ahead of me, what I had written here then stands true. For me, Senator Haji was the epitome of humility. And without a doubt, from his colorful, distinguished career in public service, I can't believe he walked so gently amongst us, spoke so gently amongst us, and yet he carried all those accolades with him. I can add words like approachable, warm, open, candid. 
thoughtful, respectful, wise, when I think of the late Senator Haji. My last encounter with him was during the time of the revenue sharing. And he came and he would sit in Senator Mutula's office, which I consider my pit stop. I, would, I always stop there for one thing or two. And I found him seated there on his own. And I sat next to him and started just a small conversation with him. He looked quiet. I asked him, Senator, are you OK? He says, I'm OK. I said to him, but you look very, you know, heavy you sharing standoff that we had had. And he said, this thing is not good. This thing is not going in the right country, in the right direction. He said, this thing is not in the spirit of BBI. Those were his words. And like Senator Murkom and said, I also asked him, but you are the chair of BBI. You can make this thing go right. And he said, nonetheless, then we went on to have you know, a small conversation where he wanted to find out a little bit about me. And I told him what I'm doing in the house and what my intentions are and what I do when I'm not in the house. And he said something to me that I'll carry for the rest of my life. He said, you know, in the end, when you take stock of your time in public service, you must be able to stand proud for what you have added to moving this country forward in the right direction. Because I could see in him, and the way he conducted himself throughout the revenue sharing, he really did stand firm for what was right for his people. And he was ready to die for it like we have had. He went on to encourage me in our conversation and he said, as a nominated member of parliament, you have been granted a platform to build upon and transform the communities that you represent and the people you serve. And to make people, the people who brought you here very proud. And he said, don't forget that. And he said, you must aim higher. So for me, that was a whole mentorship session. And like we heard from Senator Dulo earlier today, he has mentored very many. So I have to say, this is the kind of leadership we must emulate. A leadership of gentleness, openness, firmness, knowing that you need to move your country forward. A leadership of mentorship. We hold younger people. We hold their hands and be ready to to let them lead when it is their time to lead. Because that's what Senator Haji did. And I think we owe him that kind of respect as we are eulogizing him. You know, the politics of shouting. I watched Senator Haji during the revenue sharing formula. When this house, you know, we had brought it down with shouting and pointing. And you know, he sat quietly the whole time. And you know, there's something about that. Sometimes it is in silence that we resolve issues. And indeed, he has been such a long-serving public servant, resolving a lot of disputes like we have had. It must be because of his gentleness and his silence that he's able to have such wisdom to pursue peaceful uh, methods of dealing with conflict. So I must say we have a lot to learn. Thank you. Uh, Senator Foisholo, Senator Dulo. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, Madam Speaker, let me take this opportunity uh, to eulogize uh, Senator Yusuf Haji. I'm sure the five minutes might not have been enough for me. But uh, let me say a few words about Senator Haji. Senator Yusuf Haji, I, I came to know him way back when I was married through my late husband. That was way back before I came to the Senate. And truly, Senator Yusuf Haji has kept friends from young and old for many years. He has respect for everybody. We have lost a leader who has respect for authority. Senator Yusuf Haji, I served under him as a vice chair in the last Senate. And in the last Senate, Security Committee had a lot of issues. It's not like now, where we used to have 10 questions on the floor of the House every day. But Senator Yusuf Haji said,
since you are young and you are there, I don't have to be in that house to respond to those issues. You should do that. And really that gave me a lot of profile as far as a young politician or a new politician in the house was. And that is how I became uh, a senator for Isiolo because of the profile that I've made in this house. Senator Yusuf Haji, uh, clearly uh, as a chair, he has a lot of respect for his members. I remember we used to travel with him and uh, the late uh, Gigi Karioki. And in that committee, we were with Senator Orengo, Wetangula, uh, and so many other senators. But you will find every morning, because of his discipline, Senator Haji is on the table of breakfast by 7 a.m. And by the evening, he will make sure that he has bought all his members lunch, I mean, uh, sorry, dinner. We used to travel so many uh, countries. I remember one time we traveled uh, to Malaysia, then from there we went to Indonesia. They used to crack old men jokes, him and Gigi Karaoke, about elderly women and elderly men. Which means, in as much as he's humble, you will see sometimes he will crack very many funny jokes. And he's a company that you can easily enjoy. Senator Haji has really mentored myself and so many others. And if you can see what happened yesterday, and even before then, actually when he fell sick, he told me he fell in the bathroom. And when he fell in the bathroom, he actually had his bones cracking. And the only person in the house was the wife. When she came running, he told her, don't come near me because you're also going to fall. He told the wife, go and get security so that they can lift me up. So that is how Senator Yusuf Haji is responsible. Even when he was sick in, in Aga Khan, because of COVID, he never allowed anybody to come and visit him. Because he says, you must take care of yourselves. Madam Speaker, I would request if I can be added two minutes, please, if you don't mind. When he recovered and he went back home, I used to visit him with my children. He could sit down, those girls, I have two girls, and really talk to them. I know you are mother, I know you are father, you must be this, you must be that. You know, you, the prayers will be answered. That is the kind of person, senator, and children, and they are the ones who lowered the body of the ground. Okay, give her another two. Just two minutes. So, uh, Madam Speaker, Senator Haji is a great man. He's somebody that we will never forget. And he's somebody this country will never get because one of the attributes as far as government is concerned, he has never gone against the government. I remember he used to call me in my language, in Talguda. In Talguda means, Mustiana Mkubwa. Yeah? I remember he discussed in confidence about BBI with me before he was taken ill to Turkey. But I'm not going to say it here. I have shared it with the relevant authority. We must, as a country, do something in remembrance, in honor of Senator Yusuf Haji. Finally, I know a lot is going to happen as far as North is concerned, and Northeastern is concerned, but I hope, because Senator Haji stood for almost everybody, especially for Northern Kenya, Almighty God grant him Janatul Perdos. I thank you. Thank you, Senator. Senator for Nairobi, Senator Sakaja Johnson. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, um, unlike many who spared you as we were growing up um, as a PC, and I was fortunate to then meet him later 
in uh, 2011 and then 2012 when I was his party chair. Um, Madam Speaker, it was interesting because at that time he was 72 and I was 27. And it was just the numbers that were inverted. And uh, him together with him, you can imagine chairing a party of people older than your father and your parents. It was very tough. But he really encouraged and mentored me during, that, during those times. Um, I remember many people had said, these young, inexperienced guys will make us lose. But he encouraged me. I remember after, um, in 2014 August, and that was after the election, after we'd come to parliament, I was in the National Assembly, and he was in the Senate, him together with Senator Musila, who were very close friends in Washington, D.C., they called me and said, come, let's, let's take a walk. And we took a walk and they sat me down at a restaurant. I remember we were having tea. And he was having olive oil with his bread. And he said, first, the first thing we'll tell you is do this uh, uh, frequently. It is good for your body, the olive oil. And they told me between the two of them, they've served Kenya for 100 years. I said, what do you mean? They said, yes, 100 years. Senator Musila, 50, Senator Haji, 50. And he said, I have been his boss. At the time, uh, Haji was Musila's boss. And then Musila has been his boss after, when he was minister, he was the assistant uh, minister. And told me these things change. Just like Jana in quotes, let me tell you, tell your fellow young men in parliament to stop going fast. There is no speed. So with the late Gigi, who will close to two years. Um, Madam Speaker, Senator Haji was trusting. He allowed me the leeway. He encouraged me. If even the times when I was chairing and he would come, yet he's a chair, he would tell me later, you, you know, change that. But in private, he would never admonish me in public. And I've learned a lot from him. He was very humble. He was very stylish with his Ray-Bans, uh, Googles, and his white trousers. You know, even at his age, he had a good fashion sense, you know, in his white suits. Madam Speaker, I just want to say that we have lost a father, a friend, a mentor. And I want to encourage the older politicians here. Please, a light, a candle does not lose its light by lighting another candle. Mentor other people, hold their hands. As I finish, I just want to reiterate that indeed even when you had to take a stand on the revenue formula and it came here at one, despite being unwell, and sit and wait for 2.30, that it is not easy, it was not easy for him or for us, for many of us to go against what we felt the president wanted. But we did it with humility, we did it by being steadfast, and I'm sure ultimately people came to understand. It's not something to, to be proud of that we went against, it's not about going against. And he told me, you know, when you're doing the right thing, don't worry about people misunderstanding. If your conscience is clear and your heart is right, do it. They will understand later. On behalf of the people of Nairobi and my family, may his soul rest in peace. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Senator. Senator Krinyaga Ibrahim? Amanda. Okay. So the next one is Senator Mohammed Mohamud. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And let me thank the leadership for bringing up this, imp this important motion to pay condolences to our fallen brother, the late Muhammad Yusuf Haji. Madam Speaker, the late Senator was uh, an elder brother, a friend, and a colleague. Madam Speaker, as a person from the region of Northern Province, the late Yusuf Haji was a beacon of hope, and in fact, he lit a candle in that region by the style, sort of work that he had done for this government. But I'm a speaker, the late Yusuf Haji worked in difficult circumstances. His first job was a DO in Northeastern Province, in my home county, under the shift of war. Difficult as it was, he left a lot of good memories with the people of that region. But I'm a speaker, he rose through the ranks to become a PC 
and of course later member of parliament and also a minister, and those of us who work in the civil service, he served as a role model for us. So speaker, the like of uh, Senator Yusufaji is what made us in that region be part of this government. The trust that the government of Kenya had in him, the loyalty which, with, with which he served this country, the sort of mistrust that was between the government and that region at the beginning, is people like Yusuf Haji and General Mahou and the rest who may not actually be included in government during uh, 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 President Moe's time. We will forever remember him. Madam Speaker, Senator Haji was a lovely person. He was very modest, as people say, but he was also very, uh, very, very tough in his uh, in actions. We related very, very, very well with him. I personally, in the, in the, in the 10th, 11th, and also the 12th Parliament, he was our chair of the PG from the Southern Province, and he gave us a lot of guidance in terms of uh, issues of the community, uh, peace uh, making both locally and also internationally in our neighbors in Somalia, the role he spoke actually is unprecedented. Madam Speaker, Senator Yusuf Haji lastly served as the BBI chairman, and I would like, as I said yesterday, that the BBI was supposed to bring people Kenyans together, and I will ask the Kenyans to come together and emulate the character of Senator Haji, his character of bringing Kenyans together, and BBI should not divide us. I think I don't see the reason why Kenyans are quarreling a lot about BBI, is the constitutional amendment, which has you know, no serious consequences of the country, no serious consequences of the people, but for us in the region it's got some consequences because you know, my only worry is that uh, the Article 203 of the Constitution has got some negative uh, impact, impact on my own, uh, uh, you know, my, my, in my own, our own region. But having said that, I think there's is, is no reason for us to fight. For, for us to pay tribute to him, let us emulate uh, the sort of peacemaker he was, the seriousness which he, he, he served this country, and uh, use BBI to unite Kenyans and not to divide Kenyans. Madam Speaker, Senator Yusuf Haji will be remembered for the seriousness with which he served this country, the loyalty he had for successive administration, and the seriousness with which actually he served his people also as a senator for Garissa County and also as a former as an MP for Ijara. We wish him, we wish his people well. We condole the fa with the family, Nuruddin and Abdul and uh, the rest of, uh, of, of his sisters, of their sisters, and the greater family of uh, Yusuf Haji, because it's a large family. We condole with the people of Garissa County, people of Ijara, and also the people of Northeastern Province. Those of you who don't come from that region, please emulate Yusuf Haji. The loyalty of our, our people is undoubted. Kenyans will respect, respect Northeastern Province, and in fact, whatever issues we have, let us be, be thought of as this country and we, the people of Yusufaji should actually, the Yusufaji actually uh, make sure you that we, because you know, at every occasion, people talk negatively about, about that region in terms of resource sharing, in terms of our, you know, uh, in, in, uh, security challenges, in terms of uh, loyalty, still there are some people in this country doubting us. We, have, we are part of this country and we, have, we are not going anywhere. We are nobody's guests. And I think our brother, Yusuf Haji, was a good example. With those men of us, I condole him. May Almighty Allah rest him in peace and admit him to the highest of heavens as God promised. Those of us who have a difficulty with him in terms of uh, maybe he I'm sorry for the language. Please, let's forgive him and beg God that he rest in peace. May Almighty Allah rest him in peace. Amen. Uh, thank you, Senator. Senator Jeriot, Aaron Kipirui. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I want to join the rest of my colleagues in uh, eulogizing a great man, uh, somebody we had the rare pleasure of serving with in this house uh, for two terms, uh, Mr. Speaker, unlike our senior colleagues who have had the chance of knowing him, including yourself, Madam Speaker. Earlier on, when you mentioned that you knew Senator Yusuf Haji in 1983, uh, my colleague here, Senator Falada, reminded, was quick to remind me that I had not even been conceived so that's a disadvantage of being young among us great people like you, Madam Speaker. But Madam Speaker, I'd wish to be quick uh, because I understand the pressure of time and what our colleagues want to say. Earlier on today, Madam Speaker, when his son Abdul spoke to us and told us that in his last days before he lost consciousness, that the senator actually wrote a resignation letter because he felt it wasn't right for him 
to continue receiving salary. Sorry? Wanted to, yes, that's what I've said, sorry if I, I didn't mention it well, that the senator wanted to write a resignation letter because he felt it wasn't right for him to continue receiving uh, salary as senator yet not serving the people. Many people were surprised, but I was not, Madam Speaker, because that is a senator I know. Madam Speaker, last time, let me tell you a story that confirmed and came clear to my mind when his son was speaking. We had a dispute the normal disputes that we had between us and National Assembly. And at one time, it was a time like this when you were handling the budget policy statement or maybe division of revenue. And there was a proposal that was brought to this house. We were seated in Akamkunji, then Speaker Ekwe was chairing the session, and we were all gathered here and we were told that the long drawn battle between us and the Assembly was about to be brought to an end by executive offering, I think it was about three, 300 or 500 million but only under one condition, that we had to spend that money within two months, because it was almost uh, towards the end of the financial year. So many of us, we spoke excitedly and said, okay, we're toying here with ideas, what can we do with that funds? We could maybe uh, buy motor vehicles to be used in the county for oversight purposes and many such things. But when it got to Senator Yusuf Haji's chance to speak, Madam Speaker, with his authoritative voice, he told us to our faces that banish that thought. Don't ever imagine that you can use public funds in the way that I have heard many of you speak uh, today in this house. And he was so furious, Madam Speaker, to the point that he said, if you dare take this money, I will go to the public and I'll issue a press conference against you. And you know that I'm known everywhere in this country. Let us see who will elect you back into this house if you dare take that money. That was the end of that story. We never picked that money. We ended that camp, Kunji, and agreed that if the executive wanted to sort that issue of uh, oversight fund, then we better be provided with a proper legal framework on how to use those funds. That is Yusuf Haji, the man, Mr. Speaker. And so for many of us that are young and starting off our career at this time, such privileges that God extends to us to be seated in such a room with men who have served this country with distinction, then it affords us the opportunity to learn and steep look at the lives that they've led. At times such as this when you're reflecting and hearing testimonies and tributes from people who have known them throughout the decades and know that it, indeed it is possible to serve your country with distinction and stand firm even amidst all the difficulties that you may face. So on behalf of the people of Kericho, Madam Speaker, where he served as our PC, uh, being part of the greater Rift Valley those many years, many times you go to functions Madam Speaker, and I say this not because he's no longer here, but I have said this to him many times, that when you meet elderly people who served with him, uh, with him either as chiefs or as uh, deos, they'll always, uh, on their parting shot, one of the things they'll tell you is that please pass the regards to Buana PC, because to the best of their knowledge, they never knew any other PC. The PC was Yusuf Haji, and Yusuf Haji was a PC to them. They'll pass their message of condolences so therefore, this afternoon, Madam Speaker, on, the, on behalf of such men who are still alive, who served with him and come from the county of Kericho, I do pass their condolences also to his family. May God rest his soul in eternal peace. May it be a great lesson to us, especially the young leaders that are starting out their lives in public life. Serve with distinction like Mzee Haji did. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Senator. Senator Masitsa, Naomi Shionga. Uh, Thank you, ma thank you, Madam Speaker, for giving me this opportunity to eulogize uh, our Senator, Senator Yusuf Hatch. Madam Speaker, let me start by saying that it is with great sadness and a numerous sense of shock that I learned the death of Senator Haji yesterday. Indeed, it is true that the hour of death of the hour of death cannot be forecast. And we imagine it to be in a distance future. Madam Speaker, when I stand here, to me yesterday was a dark day. And uh, it gave me a lot to think about our senator, whom I had known for the last three years but I had heard of him since I was a child over the radio and other channels of media. Madam Speaker, 
And Senator Haji, as others have said, in him, you would see a father figure. In Senator Haji, you would see an advisor. In Senator Haji, you would see a peacemaker, a mender, and an, a, 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 an, an all-round man. When I look at, or when I went to his house today, it reminded me of the last, last moment that we shared with him when we were walking to this Senate. And we shared, we shared light moments. And uh, his phone, I can say it rang. And when it rang, I asked him, where have you gotten this new model phone? And he told me that if you live and age well, you'll be loved by your generation. And the answer is simply, he told me that I was bought this phone by my grandchildren. What a wonderful answer that he gave me. And to the rest that of us that have remained behind, Senator Hachi was the chair of BBI. And he has not lived to see the fruits of BBI. But indeed, to us, who are here and who will get an opportunity to debate on the same. Please, let us not ashamed Senator Haji, but actually live to his promise because he meant a lot, especially in legal matters, security and finance. He meant a lot to us. So I just want to say that my condolences to the family of Senator Haji and let us live to pray for his soul so that we co he God continue blessing his soul until we meet again. Madam Speaker, I want to finish by saying that my prayers to this Senate, we have lost three now, and we do not need it anymore. Enough is enough. Let God hear our prayer. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Senator Auta Frederick Otieno Kisumu. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I stand here with a, a very heavy heart and sad because Senator Yusuf Haji is no longer with us. Yesterday morning was a dark day for me Madam Speaker. It was a dark day because, as you know, Senator Haji was the chair of the National Security, Defense, and Foreign Relations. And during the elections of our committee, he stood with me and advised the people who are members of this committee to elect me an opposed as his vice chair. And so I've been really looking upon to work with him. But unfortunately, his death now leaves me in wondering what God had planned between me and Senator Yusuf Haji. Yusuf Haji, we met in National Assembly. And as you know, when I came to National Assembly, we've been in the, what, what we call the opposition side. And I had resisted everything in the name of the government, all the bills that would come at that time. But because of his demeanor, he's such a peaceful man and a man who loves people would always approach me and tells me, the young man, I know you have a long way to go in politics, but I want you to understand that there is a government, and government is the final authority. That time I could not listen to him, and I was known in that parliament throughout my two terms in the National Assembly as a man who'd resist anything, whether it's a bill, 
whether it is good. And therefore, that brought me to wonder when we, uh, God uh, brought us together in this house for a man who has no, known my track record and somebody might not be able to respect the authority and especially the government to decide to be his vice chair and advise the entire committee members to vote for me unopposed. And therefore, I interacted with him and he was telling me why the government must be respected. And he told me a lot of stories throughout his life when he served as a public servant diligently throughout his life that he has always respected the government. And I told him my story that when I came to politics, I thought it was gonna be a bed of roses. But what I met in parliament was like being in the, uh, somewhere in the, in, in the dungeons of devils in a house. And therefore, it's a man who is my mentor. He wanted me to reform and be able to learn that I can work with the government, despite all what I've gone through. And therefore, he would advise me as his vice chair because when we started working with him, he started uh, ailing a little bit. So most of the time he was not chairing, I was chairing. But I remember, because I could see my time there, will add me one minute. I remember one day when we had a problem here in the house, when three of our senators were arrested, and he was uh, away, then he told me, remember, I told you the government, the system is always supreme. And therefore, as you chair that meeting, you must chair it in camera. And don't even tell any story. Just chair it in camera, and the rest will be able to work out with the cabinet secretary. And I had a lot of Please wind up in one minute because we don't have enough time for everybody. And therefore, I had a, a really a big challenge to be able to respect that because I thought we needed to defend our senators. But I remember what he told me and therefore I did exactly what he told me. And when we came in this house, I would remember Senator Morcom and they all put like clothes, they really busted me. But I want to thank him for being a friend and as somebody who looked at my heart and thought I could be changed to be a responsible leader who will also always respect the authority. And his last breath, Madam Speaker, we had organized this week to go and see him, but unfortunately that never happened. And therefore, I want to assure him that I will be in still that committee and I will remember his words to respect the government of the day. May God rest his soul in eternal peace. Amen. Thank you, Senator Stewart Matayo. Asante Shukran, the speaker. The speaker Kwanza Nataka kujiunga pamoja na ndugu zangu na senator wenzangu walio tangulia kutoa rambi rambi zao na vile vile kutoa pole yangu kwa familia ya mzee Haji niko na matumaini na imani kubwa ya kwamba ndugu yangu Nurdin ataweza kuiweka familia pamoja na sisi kama tukiwa tumepiga magoti tukiwaombea Mwenyezi Mungu wakati huu wa shida waweze kupita janga hili la kupotelewa ama kumpoteza mzee kule nyumbani tunasema mti mkubwa ukianguka vifaranga vya ndege babaika havijui vitakwenda namna gani lakini na imani ya kwamba familia ya mzee itakuwa pamoja wakati huu mgumu katika sasa 
hata siku zijazo mimi pia na familia yangu nataka kutoa rambi rambi zangu kwa familia ya mzee Haji mzee Haji kwangu mimi alikuwa kama babangu mzee Haji kwangu mimi alikuwa kama rafiki wa karibu sana mzee Haji alikuwa mwandani wangu yako mambo mengi sana ambao tuliongea kama mwandani wangu ambao yalinipatia faida sana vile ambavyo nimejiendesha mimi mwenyewe katika bunge hili la senate katika mihula hii miwili nakumbuka mzee Haji alikuwa mtu wa msimamo kabisa hususan katika upande wa ugavi wa fedha wa pesa zile tulizo tunazopigania hapa ndani ya senate ili ziende katika serikali zetu za ugatuzi mzee haji alikuwa aliniambia ya kwamba mwanangu nataka nikuambie ya kwamba hivi ni vita na ikiwa kuna tashwishi zozote wewe usiwache sababu iliyokuleta hapa ni kwa sababu ya watu wakilifi kufa nao kuwa na msimamo nao na usibanduke hata kidogo kwa hiyo jawabu kama hilo liliweza kunipatia nguvu sana na ijapokuwa tulionekana kama ambao sisi tuna kosa kueleweka lakini ilikuwa ni kwa sababu ya kuchukua msimamo na hususan tukiangalia zaidi ikiwa mzee Haji anaweza kuchukua msimamo kama ule itakuwaje sisi wengine kama vifaranga tusiweze kuchukua msimamo kwa hiyo bi spika nataka nimshukuru sana babangu Haji kwa sababu alichukua msimamo kwa ndugu zangu wa Ijara Ijara na Wagarisa pamoja na wale watu wote ambao mimi nawakilisha katika bunge la senate hususan watu wa Kilifi County nasema tuwe pole sote na tunaweza kumwombea mzee Haji japokuwa roho zetu ni nzito sana kwa wakati huu na kusema tu ya kwamba sisi tulimpenda sana mzee Haji lakini Mwenyezi Mungu alimpenda zaidi sisi bora tu ni kupiga magoti na kuweza kumwombea mzee Haji familia pamoja na sote tunajua kwamba hii ndio njia ambayo kila mtu anaenda tunasema kwamba na kila wakati wote tukiwa tumepiga magoti yetu ni kuombea familia iwe na nguvu kuweza kupita janga hili la wakati huu kupotelewa na mzee naomba Mwenyezi Mungu ayeke roho ya mzee Haji mahali pema penye wema peponi Thank you Senator Olekina Ledama We are following the order senators the way it was Can I get the mic Madam Speaker I rise to support the motion the Senate expresses its deep regret and sadness at the untimely death of Senator Mohamed Yusuf Haji of Garissa County. Madam Speaker, the people of Naro County, whom I represent here, recognize him as a person who defended their rights, as a pastoralist, and offers their sympathy and condolences to his family, friends, and the people of Garissa County. Madam Speaker, I would also like to thank the mover of the motion, Senator Rango, for the historical motion which allows the Senate of the Republic of Kenya to place on record my profound grief and that of my colleagues after the loss of our friend and our colleague. Madam Speaker, 
Senator Haji was a big man. In fact, when I was listening to the message of condolences from my colleagues, I remember an incident that happened way back in 1988 when his car broke down on the road and um, he sought to get a lift from uh, an electrician. And when the electrician did not give him the lift, the electrician ended up being arrested. Jailed for three months. But that just shows you what loyalty really means and what it means when you're working for a government, the thing that you have to do. I would joke with him about those things. And having said that you have to respect the government of the day, I wouldn't even fault him for that occasion. He was a man with a great heart, Madam Speaker. I remember talking to him about the challenges in the Mao Forest. And I remember one day I said to him, my, my friend, I've seen something closer to your name as one of the beneficiaries of the forest. And he said to me, let me go check and I'll let you know. When he went and he checked, he came and said, yeah, maybe there's something like that. You know, but we'll see what we can do. Madam Speaker, in our day-to-day -day exchange inside and outside parliament, we may not always live to the expectations of everyone, and particularly people of the opposing sides. But we must always be able to respect the integrity and the position of every member. In fact, Madam Speaker, I can say that during the time when we were debating the revenue share, this, you know, sentiments that we are all expressing here characterize the kind of leader that the deceased was. He's a person who respected the government of the day, but when it came to respecting the will of the people, and particularly the pastoralist, he stood firm and he said, I will forever fight for our people to be able to get resources. That was a friend. And Madam Speaker, I always say a friend in need is a friend indeed. Our counties were losing money. He came together, we all came together, and we made sure that we fight for what we believe in. Madam Speaker, in that spirit, I would like to end by saying this. I hope that the proponent of BPI will remember that aspect of the revenue share that the late fought so hard for so that it does not continue dividing this country and for all of us to be able to move together. I wish the family all the best during this time and I want to assure them that Kenya and particularly the people of Narok are praying with them and wishing them all the best. May the good Lord rest his soul in eternity. Thank you, Senator. Senator Iman Falhara Deko. And please, if you can save a minute, a minute each, it will uh, allow everybody. I can see there are two members who may not get a chance. So reduce from five to something like three or four. Thank you. Senator Iman. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for giving me this opportunity to eulogize with the family. Um, the Haji was a father, a mentor, a friend, my best friend, and I'm going to miss him in this house. Um, he taught me a lot, Ms. Ma Madam Speaker. Um, beside him being my senator, he was a relative too. And I came, um, despite us coming from Garissa County, I came from Ijara as well, and he is a relative. Um, Madam Speaker, um, Mzee Haji, words cannot describe him. Um, he was a humble man, he was a respected uh, man, and a very um, um, a quiet man who doesn't like uh, to hurt no one. And he likes, a, he's a peacemaker. He, he, he makes um, everyone happy, he tried his best. And despite him being, uh, he's, he's very authoritative the way it, the rest of the senators said. And I remember, Madam Speaker, during the revenue sharing, um, the nominated senators had a showcase letter. And I remember um, he sent Senator, my sister, Senator Halake, to go and pick me from the extension when the COVID restriction was there. 
And then when I saw her coming for me and she said, Mze was looking for you and I was like, no, no way because I've got a showcase letter which, you know, I don't know what to do. But he gave me that authority to vote for the people of Garissa and he told me um, what his stand will be and I should follow that, which I did despite the intimidations and, you know, um, whatever because he said whoever does anything to you did anything to me as well. Madam Speaker, I thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Senator Langat, Christopher Andrew. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for also Save giving a me. a minute also. I, I doubt that one. <laughs> Thank you for giving me this opportunity to eulogize this very particular great man. I want to begin by saying that uh, uh, Senator Yusuf Haji was a selfless man. He loved everybody, and you're a witness, Madam Speaker, that when he was a member of Education Committee, all the time we nominated him to travel outside the country, he would give his chance to somebody else. He was such a good man, and I want to say that we learned some good things about him. One also is that he was a great time manager. More often than not, we found him seated in the meeting waiting for us, and we would always encourage us that you are still young and you're wasting time. So we learned a lot on matters, time management, uh, from him. Another thing that I learned from Senator Yusuf Haji was the fact that he's, he loved so much physical exercises. I remember when we were in Mombasa one time on a conference that every morning you'd find him uh, working and he, he would tell us that he, it was his routine to walk 10 kilometers every morning. He was a great man, and I want to say that uh, I, I want to, to concur and support what the president did in Kisi by renaming Gusi Stadium, uh, Simon Nyachaya Stadium. And I would like also to say that uh, by extension, we also would like to ask the Senate to encourage the executive, even ourselves, that we would come up with something so important and name after him so that we may remember him for a long time. So the Kariza people, the people from the Northeastern, uh, I would like to urge you, and even us in Rift Valley, remember he is the longest serving VC in Rift Valley, who served diligently and gave most of us an opportunity to realize peace in the Great Lift. If the, uh, the, the, the assembly the, the of uh, Nakuru County would also come up with something, even a very good street, and named after him, our children in future would ask who was this man, and we shall be able to narrate to them that they, they are lived a great man by the name Yusuf Haji, that uh, his achievement actually are so great that needs to be remembered for a long time. Uh, lastly, Madam Speaker, remember one time as uh, Jubilee uh, Senators, we went to State House uh, to request for oversight funding, and he was the man whom we had nominated to represent us. Though we might not benefit because of the time, I would like to request the executive to honor that oversight funding on behalf of this man who was re uh, requesting on our behalf. May his soul rest in great peace, and may his soul live forever in the hands of Almighty God. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, thank you, Senator. Senator Mboko, George Ochila Yako, please save two minutes for us. Uh, well, I'll, I'll try, but I don't want to uh, guarantee. Now, thank you, Madam Speaker, and uh, thanks to leadership for bringing this motion. This is a very important motion. Madam Speaker, you have noticed uh, lately the bad manners uh, politicians have in funerals where they pretend to be going to condole with families. They pretend to be going to mourn with the uh, uh, friends and those who are gathered to give a dignified send-off uh, to their beloved ones, but they fight they abuse one another and they do such things. So for the leadership to have 
uh, thought of this opportunity where we can somberly and where we can, uh, in a very dignified way, speak about our colleague. I think this is something that deserves an accolade and should be part of the tradition here. Madam Speaker, I want to say two things because uh, many things have been said. But before I say them, I want to uh, bring my condolence and uh, the condolences of the people of Migori. They knew Senator Haji. They loved him. He was an ideal citizen, and all of them have been motivated and inspired by uh, his life and uh, the way he carried himself. Madam Speaker, I want to speak about loyalty. It has been mentioned here that uh, Senator Haji uh, was without a doubt uh, a very loyal uh, public servant, uh, an elected public servant loyal to leadership and government, an elected, pub uh, an appointed public servant loyal to leadership and government. Now, some of us, particularly politicians, who are big-headed like I used to be when I was a younger one, and we served with him in this house, eh, we didn't believe in issues uh, called loyalty, and we thought that uh, if you are so radical, you are admirable. Madam Speaker, loyalty breeds trust. If you are loyal to leadership, leadership gets to trust you, and when you are trusted by leadership and you are a forthright and straight person like you, who, you Yusuf Haji the late, you can influence leadership. You can influence leadership positively, and you can actually be a catalyst for change. So let us all know that uh, lead, uh, loyalty is not a negative thing, and loyalty will earn you trust uh, to the people who put you in positions. And if you are a straight and forthright person, you will use that opportunity to positively influence uh, those people. And I want to say that uh, Yusuf Haji exhibited le leadership to the regime of Kenyatta, to the regime of uh, the late Moy, to the regime of the current Kenyatta, and uh, he also was quite loyal to his people, and that is something that is worth admiring. I also want to say that um, this country has been a divided country, uh, particularly along religious and cultural lines. And the late Haji coming from an Islamic background, a Somali background, and the tension that had been there between uh, Kenya and uh, Somali uh, made him uh, suspicious uh, and his community uh, sus uh, be suspected of being disloyal to, this, uh, disloyal to this nation. Madam Speaker, in 2009, uh, I sat somewhere and I was watching the funeral of the late Michael Jackson, and I remember uh, the eulogy of Michael Jackson that was given by Reverend Al Shampton. Uh, Al Shapton said that Michael Jackson was the first person to have introduced black culture, to have introduced black talent to the international stage. I believe the service of Yusuf Haji has uh, brought trust and unity uh, to this uh, religiously diverse country. And I believe that uh, to the Muslim brothers and sisters who we have here, if you can serve so well as Yusuf Haji served, and to the Christians, if you can do similarly, uh, all of us will uh, uh, minimize the suspicion we have among ourselves. I want to rest uh, my condolence and say and ask God that may his soul rest in eternal peace. Uh, thank you, Senator Ali Abdullah Ibrahim. Please save us a minute. At long last. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I have a long story, so uh, that's what told me. Uh, first and foremost, because of the time, I am afraid that uh, my time will not be enough. Uh, I want this to start my, by my condolences to the family, the people of Gariza, and the country at large. Inna lillahi wa inna ilaihi rajiun. We, in the, uh, Yusuf Haji, was a gentle, humble and a very good man at that, if I may say that. Uh, as it has been said, uh, one time in 2002, when we were traveling together as members of parliament, uh, we went to Elwak, 
where he, he was brought the, what do you call, the book which he signed in 1965 when he was due. He visited Elwa Health Center a dispensary at that time, and uh, they brought us the visitor's book which he signed. So this is somebody who has been working from that time to date, and I was privileged to have uh, been with him from that time, from 1998 when he joined parliament uh, to date. Uh, Madam Speaker, there's a story I will never forget. One time when I was a member of parliament some times back, and I decided to support, well, that's when the president, well, President Moy was still in power, I supported a motion which was to change the calendar of parliament. And that was supposed to be a constitutional change uh, just after the formation of the PAC that we wanted to change the calendar of parliament so that PAC decides when parliament convenes and not when not to convene instead of the way it was uh, the executive. And when I just came from outside somewhere that morning and when I came and I saw a motion by Honorable Olo Aringo which was asking the, that we support that uh, the calendar and I supported it and I was summoned to State House and we went with him, Madam Speaker. When we went to State House and met the late Mzemoi, the Mzemoi just asked me, are you the one, do you think you are, the, you, you are the one who says that I cannot take care of this country and I was really uh, afraid. Mm -hmm. I told him, Mzemoi, you have been there for 24 years. Then the Mzemoi laughed. Then I, he said he wanted to talk to somebody, it was Sari Kosge. Then he, he did, you know, he called, I don't know, four numbers with that SIM. Then I told him, Mzee, umepiga inne. The Mze Haji Allah Rahma carried me out of the office. I didn't know he was calling a hotline. I didn't know anything called a hotline. Kumbe was calling hotline to Sari Kosge, and I was telling him, because the numbers I knew were six, and he dialed four. So I told him, we have done four, and the, the Mze, I don't know how he carried me. That is how loyal he was. And when I told him, why are you doing this? He told me, how can you talk to the president like that? So that is somebody who respected uh, leadership and respected uh, the government uh, th that way. Uh, I was given a story one time that when he was appointed a DC to Kiambu in 1978, the DC who was there, who happened to be from the family of the president, refused to vacate office. Over the weekend, he went there dealt with the Ascari's APs, everything of the DC was removed from the office, from his house, and it was parked in a vehicle, so that when the DC came on Monday, Haji had occupied everywhere. <laughs> so that's how tough, and how he knew if he came back and said, the guy has refused to go, he will be told, we'll look for you somewhere else to stay. So because of the way DCs were prestigious, he had to deal with the APs and promote several of them in the absence of the DC. And he was able to do that so that he occupied the office. And that is somebody who knew what he wanted and will do what he wanted that way, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, the only thing possibly this government can do for Yusuf Haji is to create Ijara constituency. Give it another constituency for the BBI. I will not talk much about the BBI, what he did or what he did not do. But whatever the government can do, they can do anything even if it is an amendment after the referendum, creating Ijara consti another constituency for Ijara will be something uh, which will be very helpful for the people of Ijara and they will be very grateful. The president today said in his residence that he was going to name somewhere in Nairobi and also Gariza in his honor. But I will urge the president also to look into that later after the referendum, Madam Speaker. Uh, that will be, uh, and there's one thing he used to tell me, he used to tell me that you, you are supposed to be. Uh, thank you, Senator. Senator Ross Nyamunga, I don't see her. May I give that chance to Senator Ongeri Samson? Thank you, Madam Speaker. Let me also add my voice to a very, to the loss of a great friend. Senator Yusuf Haji, we work together in many situations right from the time of uh, Mze Moy, the President of the Republic of Kenya, through the time when we had uh, some difficulties in 2007, 2008, and became the Minister for Defense, and I was the Minister for Education. And we had several issues that were bothering him at that stage. 
and he was building his tenure and my tenure in the Ministry of Education, that we were able to create a very special uh, relationship and uh, develop a policy on nomadic education, and uh, which was so critical and important for the people in the Asal regions. And, and I remember him for that. Secondly, uh, during that period of time, uh, when we were in Kanu, uh, I think we did a lot in terms of uh, free milk distribution to schools and various places, and particularly his interests. And I noted that one of the, his major interests was one of peace. And we, we struck a common note, because that's also equally my interest, that he was so much interested in anything that will bring about peace for this nation. And even when we had very volatile situations uh, developing uh, in the country, we we'll always compare notes and we we'll always move to the level where it needed uh, them to hear the alternative view on how this issue can be resolved. And I can say behind the, the screens that a lot of issues were resolved that ended up amicably without placing this country into jeopardy. He did a wonderful job as the PC Nakuru, and, and that is not in doubt whatsoever. And when he decided to join politics, again, he did a wonderful job in his ministerial appointments as a cabinet minister. And we were together for all those years that he was a cabinet minister, I was also a cabinet minister. And I remember his contribution, particularly in the docket of security, having been uh, 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 an old hand in, uh, in a provincial administration and the sensitivities of uh, security nature of issues, both in the Rift Valley and in the northern, northeastern, uh, it, it was quite easy for him to handle these dockets. And no wonder President uh, Moy put him in a very sensitive docket of the Ministry of Defense and subsequently in the provincial administration. We've seen a man, even in this Senate, when issues have tended to break this Senate, he's been one, single, one voice that has always uh, stood firm and clear on how this must proceed. And it's a tragedy that we lose such a person in the, such an hour and such a time. And, and, and for me, it's been a, a double tragedy because, a triple, a triple tragedy, because only yesterday that we buried another great man in the name of Honorable Simon Nyachai, who also worked in the provincial administration before he scaled his interest to politics and subsequently served in the cabinet. And all of us at one time were in the same cabinet. And only again, a few hours later, we hear about the death of uh, Honorable Yusuf Achi. It was heartbreaking. It had to make me fly from, Mumba from Kisumu this afternoon to be able to join in this eulogy of mourning a great man. And in the same vein, let me also say that we have lost another uh, very important uh, member of parliament for Bonchari, uh, Mze, the Honorable Oro Yoka. We lost him last night again. And uh, this month of February seems to be a very catastrophic month. And uh, we mourn and we send also condolences to the family of those uh, who are bereaved, particularly the Honorable Member Oro Oyoka, and also the family of Mze uh, Yusuf Haji. And, and I know him as a very straightforward player, and nothing will come in between him and the truth. So let him rest in peace. I thank you, Madam Speaker. Oh, Mr. Speaker now. Madam Speaker. Uh, Senator Haji Faria Ali. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, for giving me this opportunity. I wish to uh, also condone with the family and send my condolences to them. I know that no amount of condolences or words can, can, can take care of their pain. We know they are, they are in a very, I mean, painful uh, period, and we, I wish that uh, Almighty God will ease their pain. Madam Speaker, uh, Senator Yusuf Haji, as we used to popularly call him Baba because of the, the fatherly figure 
that he pr provided for everyone, in whichever political side you belong, you always knew that you could count on him, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I think the shoes of Senator Yusuf Haji are too big for any of us to fit in. And I pray that by the time we leave this world, we will have achieved even half of what he was able to achieve in terms of public service and public good for betterment of everyone in this country and the world over. Madam Speaker, I also had a personal experience with Senator Yusuf Haji. There was a brewing clan conflict. Samahani, Samahani, Mwishimua Fadhiya, ni Mwishimua Speaker, CEO, Madam Speaker. Sorry. Um, uh, Mr. Speaker, I had a personal experience with Senator Yusuf Haji, whereby there was a brewing conflict within my community in Wajia that uh, I, I didn't know what to do about it. And I approached him and I said, this is what is happening. And I even gave him a clip of somebody speaking. And I told him, can you bring us together, the two of us, so that we speak about this, this issue, one of the other leaders. And he told me, that will bring confrontation. He doesn't want to do that, but he wants to solve this problem for once and for all. He said, I will not even tell the person you are the one who sent me this clip. I will manage this my own way. And uh, he, the, there is also another interesting thing that he told me, Mr. Speaker, that it is easy to start a clan conflict, but it is very, very difficult to contain once it escalates. And true to his word, uh, Mr. Yusuf Haji must have spoken to that person or whatever happened because he, he only told me that problem consider it done without him telling me the details of how he handled that. So Madam Speaker, that shows somebody with a lot of wisdom, some, uh, Mr. Speaker, somebody with a lot of wisdom uh, and somebody who can handle conflict easily, especially in our region where there is, because of scarcity of resources, there are always conflict. Senator Yusuf Haji will be missed greatly by my community and any other community, pastoral community that had conflict be, uh, among them, uh, Mr. Speaker. And then, <coughs> and, 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 and that thing disappeared. I have never heard about that issue again and those communities lived together. Up to today, there is no problem. Uh, uh, and then he also had a fatherly figure. Sometimes you feel like, you know, you, do, you achieve something and he acknowledges that you have achieved that and encourages you to do so, just like any other person, father would do for their sons or daughter. He was also a, a team player, uh, Mr. Speaker. It didn't matter, you know, whatever that he believed, he would support it to the core, especially where government business is concerned. He would always support, most of the time. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, for people of Northern Kenya, we have lost 33% of the elected senators in this house, in just one person, because we are only three counties. So you can imagine how much great loss we are facing as a, as a region. Uh, Mr. Speaker, finally, I, I pray that the Almighty God will forgive his sins. And all is said and done, there is everything, we, I mean, everything we do, I think we need to learn from him that you do with thoroughness, eagerness, and the... the Lakini nafikiri kwa sababu ya jazba za kupoteza, uh, ku, ku, jazba za kuweza kumpoteza, eh, mzee wetu, Yusuf Haji, ambaye ni mzee wa heshima, na taadhima nyingi mno, ambaye hakuwa naonyesha hisia, na alikuwa ni muaminifu sana kwa ule upande ambao ye mwenyewe, alikuwa naunga mkono, uh, alifika mpaka kaonekana kama yeye ndiyo sura ya serikali katika jamhuri hii yetu ya Kenya kwa sababu tawala zote aliweza, aliwahi kutumika aidha kama mkuu wa mkoa ama waziri kwa hiyo ni jambo ambalo lila kusifiwa sana na kwa sababu ya hilo nampa nafasi sasa kiranja walio wachache mheshimiwa Mutula Kilonzo Thank you. Mr. Speaker, 
Allow me to condole with the family of Yusuf Haji and the people of Garissa on behalf of the people of Makwen and my family. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we have lost, I don't even think words can confirm, words are enough as many have said about the life and times of Yusuf Haji. Two, I don't think it's enough to name a building after this gentleman. It's not enough. I think we must emulate the public service mantra that was part of his DNA. Mr. Speaker, it cannot be that you want to become a rich person because of public service. That is those are the lessons that somebody can serve for so long and yet just walk away a simple man. The current public service is that you become a billionaire in public service. That is the current trend. If you are going to follow Yusuf Haji, then you must follow this good senator. This gentleman who served in the public service was laid to rest next to just another ordinary king. Mr. Speaker, this gentleman, and Mr. Speaker, this gentleman requested me at the beginning of this, uh, and for the longest time, Mr. Speaker, his mat was in my office. If you see me thriving, Mr. Speaker, it's because of the blessings of Yusuf Haji. <laughs> Such a humble man that during the formula, Mr. Speaker, and said of the problems of BBI, he mentioned to me, BBI at Auta. The only reason why he kept media away from that committee in between the DCI and DPP. He said that also openly. So if we are going to remember Senator Haji, can we remember Senator Haji by doing the correct thing, the right thing? To serve with these people who are twice our age and to gain Again, from the experience of these good people who do not treat us as children and treat us as their peers is something we should never take for granted. So we want to tell you, our dear older colleagues, we value your wisdom, we value your wit, we value your advice. Let's say this when you can hear. So that, so that all of us then have matured in this house and are treated as equals because of all of you. And thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the additional minute. May the good soul of this good gentleman, who will never replace, who I watched in Yaliotokea when I was in primary and served with him, may he rest in peace. You have asked for forgiveness. This man has been forgiven, I can assure you, for the good deeds he has done. Let voice to this very important message as I support the motion. Mr. Speaker, uh, before I give the condolences from the Senate Committee um, of Justice Legal, uh, let me allow me just to say some two, three words to condone the family. Mr. Speaker, personally, I knew Haji uh, before I came to Senate, uh, but interacted more with him after I came. We've lost as a country patriotic and with all the humility. Mr. Speaker, we are fighting the Senate Majority Leader in honor of our departed colleague, the late Senator Mohammed Yusuf Haji. Senator Haji was a member of the Standing Committee on Justice, Legal Affairs, and Human Rights, in which he served with great dedication and commitment from July last year, together with the Senate Committee of the report on the Building Bridges Initiative, BBI, even during the time when he was an this morning, the committee held a meeting during which members gave glowing tributes to their interim towering figure in our nation, nation's history. Over the six decades that Senator Haji served in this nation in various capacity, he remained humble and treated everyone with dignity and respect, regardless of the status or the title you held. Honorable Speaker, the Standing Committee on Justice, Legal Affairs, and Human Rights held a number of sittings jointly with the National Security Disputes, which the two committees are still considering. While these were matters that significantly raised passions among senators and members of the public, 
Senator Haji guided the deliberations with a lot of wisdom, patience, and understanding. He, empathic, uh, he, empathetic, he was empathetic enough to ensure that the affected senators could fully ventilate on the experience that they had gone through. One moment I recall is when, at the end of the sitting, when the visitors and the media had left, he took time to patiently explain to senators his actions at a previous meeting where senators had felt that he was too tough with them. Not many leaders of his stature would have the humility to do that, but as has been spoken to by many colleagues, Senator Haji was different. Honorable Speaker, on behalf of the Standing Committee on Justice, Legal Affairs, and Human Rights, and on my own behalf, allow me to convey our heartfelt condolences to the family, friends of the late Senator Muhammad Yusuf Haji, and the great people of Garissa. And may his soul rest in peace. Thank you. Asante sana, Senator Jumba Boy Juma. Isa, Isa Boy. Uh, Sante sana mwishime speaker kunipa fursa hii. Niweze pia kuungana na masenete wezangu. Mimi pia natuwa risala ya zarambi zambi, zangu mimi na familia yangu na pia katika watu wa county ya kwale kwa kupoteza mze wetu senator Muhammad Yusuf Haji wa Garissa. Mwishime wa speaker, Kuna wakati fulani wakati mimi tumechagulio tumengie katika seneti hii 20, uh, mwaka alifumbili na kumina saba katika seneti hii mzee aliniita siku moja. akanambia kijana wewe mimi nimekuwa na nimefanya kazi na babako mare mbabako alipo kwa mbunge wakati ya kwa babangu ni kwa ni mbunge wa kwale central na hee pia yiku mbeleza haki mare mjuma boy alifanya kazi na babangu katika serikali ya mtuku, uh, hayati kinyata Na pia akafanya kazi, amenambia amefanya kazi na kaka angu, mkubwa angu, marehemu, katika seneti hii, katika umulu, mwele 2013, pamoja kiwa hapo. Na kanambia na wewe kijana unabati sana, nimekuwa na wewe katika bunge hili, la kuminambili, 2017. Kwa hivu, nashukuru sana kijana wewe na uchukue muendo huo huo kama anavuenda babako na ndugi yako. Kwa hivu, mina kumbuka sana maneno ya mzee kwa kizungumza. Na pia tuta hatutaweza kumsahau mzee maneno yake alikuwa akizungumza hapa ndani ya ndani ya senate yetu na jambo la mwisho pia mheshimiwa speaker kuzungumzia ni kwamba wakati tukingangana wakati wa mgao wa pesa mzee alikuwa na msimamo mkali sana na alisema kwamba hakuna kaunti itapoteza hata ndururu katika katika katika, katika huo mgao wa, wa serikali na ni kweli alisimama imara na tukaweza kufaulu sote katika bunge hili la senate Mwenyezi Mungu alaze roho yako watu wema Na pia mwisho nkimalizia, marehemu Yusuf Haji ni lazima katika kumbu kumbuko yake katika serikali hii ikumbuke kumfanya kitu kama alivo sema mwishimi wa kikilonzo. Si barabara au nyumba yute, yute marehemu Yusuf Haji kufanya kitu cha maana kionekanike katika Kenya hii kwamba huyu alikuwa ni shujaa pia katika nchi yetu ya Kenya aliweza kuhudumu kama PC, akaweza kujumu kama DC na mpaka amekuwa mbunge, mpaka amekuwa senator. Na pia amefanya mambo mengi ambayo sisi kama wa Kenya ni lazima tuweze kukwena kumbukumbu tumkumbuke. Watu wa Garissa na waombea mwenyezi mungu pia nao wa subra. Kaunti ya Garissa na pia iweze kutenga sehemu. Hata kama ni kujenga kama ni hall au kujenga kama ni shule katika eneo bunge la Garissa. Ia kikisho kwa shule hiyo iweze kuitwa jina la marehemu senator Muhammad Yusuf Haji. Asante sana mwishimi wa speaker kwa nipafurusa hii. Karibu sana. Mwishimiwa Alice Milgo. Thank you. Kila, kila, kila Thank you, Mr. Nafasi. Speaker. Lazima tusawazishe. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for allowing me this uh, chance to also uh, pass my condolences for, to the family of Senator Yusuf Aichi for this great loss. It is a loss that is so painful. I lost my mother recently, and it is so, so hard to actually replace uh, that particular loss. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I want to mourn this great leader, uh, a humble leader, a peace lover, a leader who loved uh, each and every individual, irrespective of a uh, tribe 
or political affiliation, and indeed a leader who is what emulating. Mr. Speaker, uh, his character and knowledge made him stood out in the, from the pastoral community. That is why he was assigned great and difficult jobs at that very early uh, age, uh, such as uh, being a provincial commissioner for the great and expansive Rift Valley, which was a very difficult area to manage with a lot of conflicts, a lot of fighting, but he managed to uh, bring sobriety in that particular region. I remember meeting Yusuf Haji in the year 1992 when he had come to commission a school pass and a generator in an institution I led. And during that, those, those days, Mr. Speaker, uh, there was what we call a can youth wingers. Those youth wingers were assigned to institutions and they were supposed to find out who are not towing the line of the government. In this case, when Yusuf came around, I thought it was a chance for me to actually ask him that they were already, this youth wing was already becoming a nuisance in various institutions. Uh, but then with this uh, non-nonsense administrative ability, as well as humility, he managed to sober up the youth wing us. However, at the course of interacting with me, he told me to be a good listener, to be firm, make good decisions, uh, that will not affect each and any individual, and even uh, uh, those you doing us, and more specifically, I respect the authority and the government of the day. I fight you, he upheld Mr. Speaker until he's dead. Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, I think many of our, uh, my colleagues have spoken that uh, maybe uh, some buildings, some roads can be named after use of Archie. But I, uh, I think I agree with uh, Senator Mutula Gilonso Jr. that uh, if even a quarter of our people, a quarter of our politicians, a quarter of our civil servants could in this case emulate the servant leadership that Yusuf Hachi actually displayed, I think this country would be a better place uh, to live in. Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, this, has been, this is a great loss uh, to uh, the Senate Indeed, that has robbed the Senate, uh, the family, the people of Carissa County, and Kenya at large, of a servant leader, a husband, a father, a great mender, and in this case, a person worth emulating. I think his legacy shall remain forever, and I'm encouraging my colleagues that in this case, we should emulate what Yusuf Haji did. That was a great musee. May his soul rest in eternal peace. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Asante sana kwa rangi yako pia ya manjano. Asante sana. Mwishimiwa Kiyo Wambua Enoch. I thank you, Mr. Speaker, for this opportunity to support a motion by Senator Orengo to eulogize our departed colleague, uh, Senator Mohamed Yusuf Aji. Mr. Speaker, my first encounter with uh, Senator Yusuf Aji was in civic education in schools when we learned about provincial administration and the provincial commissioners. A man who became a district officer in the 1960s and worked through the ranks to the position of provincial commissioner until he retired from uh, provincial administration in 1997. The speaker, my colleagues have said that the, the tradition and the norm of naming roads in honor of departed leaders may not be good enough for the stature and person and character of Senator Yusuf Aji. Perhaps I would suggest to the speaker that the best way to immortalize this great hero is to ensure that first of all, 
we rename the government school and name it Senator Yusuf Aji uh, Kenya School of Government. Because he served in the provincial administration for the longest time, and that is the institution that teaches provincial administration and public administration. And in it, Mr. Speaker, scholars should evolve a doctrine. In other jurisdictions, Mr. Speaker, a leader at the level of Senator Aji will get a doctrine. We would have uh, the, the Senator Yusuf Aji doctrine uh, taught in the school of government if we really, really want to immortalize his service and his commitment to the welfare of society. Mr. Speaker, after encountering Senator Yusuf Aji in school, it was a great privilege, a great honor for me uh, to meet him face to face and serve alongside him as senator in this house. Mr. Aji was firm but very respectful, Mr. Speaker. I remember the first encounter that I had with him in service was sometimes in 2018. When the speaker ruled that the minister, the cabinet secretary in charge of interior, uh, should meet the committee of the whole and deal with certain issues in this chamber. And when the cabinet secretary came, the RG being chairman of the security committee, uh, decided that the media was not going to be allowed in. And so I rose on a point of order uh, to challenge that decision. And, and Mze looked me in the eye and said, that decision is final. The speaker, after the session, I went to apologize to Mze, the Senator Aji, but he told me, no, 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 you don't have to apologize. Uh, we just had to do that to protect the image of the Senate. The speaker, colleagues have said here that Mze Aji delegated to them, delegated duties to them. But the most important thing he did not do is that he never delegated responsibility. The buck always stopped with him. And for that, Mr. Speaker, we respect him. Lastly, in the footsteps of what Senator Orengo said, Mze Aji stood for tolerance. He tolerated divergent views. The Speaker, I want to urge us, all of us, that the speaker, a different opinion on any matter is not necessarily always a bad opinion. It is just a different opinion. Let us tolerate and nurture differences in opinions to build a society. Samahani, Senator Mhandisi Hargura. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, uh, indeed, uh, we are all from the Almighty, and we all go back to him, and that's what happened to our brother. And that is the way we are all going to go. Mine is first to send my condolences and condolences of my family and the people of Marsabit County, the family of Senator Yusuf Haji and the people of Garissa, and also, we pray for uh, patience and perseverance for the family during these trying times so that they can go through it. And we also ask forgiveness for our brother. I also like to thank the Muslims who came out to pray for him because I witnessed a phenomenon I didn't witness in this country before, where because of the Friday, because of the funeral prayer, the whole uh, mosque and the whole of South Sea, South sea around the environment of the mosque were all filled 30 minutes to the prayer, meaning people had that kind of uh, goodwill for him. I hope that will be a good sign for him that his deeds have been accepted by the Almighty. Mr. Speaker, uh, as uh, people of Marsabit, we benefited from Senator Yusuf Haji's wisdom. During our trying times, we had clashes in 2013 in Moyale, and uh, 
uh, the President, His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta, appointed Senator Yusuf Haji and former Speaker Ole Kaparo to mediate. And I saw what leadership was that time when he brought the, the elders from warring communities and told them that they have to sit down and talk to each other and they are not going to leave that room until they came up with a solution. And that is when the 35 members uh, elders committee was formed and that is how the clashes in Moyale ended. And uh, personally also, I had experience serving with him in the, in the last Senate in the Committee for uh, National Security and Foreign Relations. And uh, I had uh, the privilege of uh, watching actually and uh, following two elderly senators, Senator Gigi Kariuki and Senator Yusuf Haji, when we were discussing on even visiting Kapedo, like Kipia during the clashes, and you could see in them, sitting just watching, the, watching them, you could see what this country has gone through in terms of uh, democracy and all that. To them, uh, it's like uh, we are not taking our responsibility seriously. There's a kind of a lot of liberalism, even in uh, the way we conduct our things. There were people who went through a system where decisions were made and followed, unlike now where leaders can make decisions, they can make statements and nobody follows. Also, even internationally, I had the privilege of traveling with him to Tehran as the chair. He was the chair and I was a member of that committee. You could see also how uh, he was dealing with the international uh, relations in terms of talking to those uh, foreign countries. You could learn a lot from them. I learned a lot from him by interacting with him, and I think that gives me an insight as to what leadership was and what it is now and what we need to take into account as leaders so that we can deliver our services to our people. Uh, lastly, his uh, focus for representation of the people of Garissa is very clearly stated. And uh, when it comes to even the BBI issue, I heard what Mutula said, that uh, much as he was the chair, he had reservations. And I believe among the reservations is the introduction through the back door of the part of the formula, the one man, one vote, which has been introduced, the capping, which has been introduced. And that is one reason why, as uh, people from northern Kenya, uh, people from sparse populated areas, pastoralized areas, marginalized areas, we have issues with that BBI because what we fought for for two, three months in this house has been put in a, in a legislation which we cannot argue about the way we have been arguing about the formula. Because to change that constitution when it goes through, it will be through a referendum like this. Where will we get even that opportunity as people from marginalized areas to convince this country to go to referendum to remove that one clause which says that uh, irrespective of whatever formula you put in, per capita, no uh, county will get three times what the least county gets, that's Nairobi. So even if you increase even to 35, 50%, so long Asante sana mwashimiwa Halgura. Sasa hivi na mpa na fasi mwashimiwa wakili mwandamizi. Uh, Mwenye haji Muhammad Faki. Asante mwashimiwa speaker kwa kunipa fursa hii kumuomboleza marehemu Muhammad Yusuf Haji ambaye alikuwa ni senator wa county ya Garissa. Mwashimiwa speaker Ningipia penda kumpongeza Senator Orengo kwa kuleta mswada huu wa kuweza kumkumbuka um, mwishimi wa mwenda zake Muhammad Yusuf Haji kwa mchango mkubwa aliofanya katika taifa hili. Kwanza akiwa kama afisa wa serikali ambapo ali, e, alifanya kazi kama dio kisha baadaya kawa mpaka PC. Na kumbuka kuna wakati fulani alikuwa anafanya kazi kama PC katika uh, Coast Province ambapo hedikota yao ama makawa yao makuu ni Mombasa. Mwishima speaker, 
Seneta Haji alikuwa ni seneta mnyenyekevu sana. Na alikuwa kukimuona katika uh, shughuli zake uwezi kudhani kwamba huyu alikuwa ni mtu mwenye mamlaka makubwa na vile vile alikuwa amefanya kazi kubwa katika serikali yetu ya, ya Kenya. Mimi binafsi niliwahi kuswali naye swala ya alfajiri katika msikiti hapa karibu na nyumbani kwake Westlands na alikuwa anakuja msikitini peke yake alfajiri bila hata bodyguard. Inamaanisha kwamba alikuwa kwa hana hofu ya jambo lolote ambalo laweza kumfika wakati yeye mwenyewe alikuwa kwa ana umri wa miaka karibu 80 e, na alikuwa hana uoga kwamba kuna jambo lolote laweza kumpata wakati ule alfajiri. Mheshimiwa speaker Mombasa pia wakati alikuwa akija kwa shughuli zake za kikazi ama kujivinjari alikuwa na mpango wa matembezi katika baha, katika ufuo wa bahari asubuhi ambapo watu wengi pia tunafanya mazoezi kule asubuhi na yeye alikuwa akijiunga nao kutembea kama kilomita kumi ama, ama saba kwa siku ili kuweka mwili wake katika hali nzuri ya kiafya na yeye mheshimiwa speaker pia alikuwa anatembea bila ya kuwa na mlinzi ama bila ya kuhofu jambo lolote linaweza kumfikia mahali kama pale kwa hiyo mheshimiwa speaker kitu ambacho tunasoma katika maisha ya mheshimiwa haji ni kuwa alikuwa ni mtu mnyenyekevu mtu mpole na mtu ambaye ilikuwa kauli yake ilikuwa ni kauli thabiti. Kwa sababu ulikuwa uwezi kumuondoa katika msimamo ambao uko ambao amechukua bila ya kuwa na sababu nzuri za kimsingi za kuweza kubadilisha msimamo wake. Tulifurahia sana wakati tulipokuwa tunapambana kuhusiana na mambo ya ugavi wa rasilimali mwaka jana tukiwa na seneta Haji kama mzee wetu katika kikundi kile na kwa hakika uongozi wake ulionekana kwamba ni mtu mwenye kauli thabit na alikuwa si mtu wa maneno mengi mheshimiwa speaker kwamba japokuwa alikuwa anapingana na upande wa serikali kuhusiana na swala lile la ugavi wa rasilimali alikuwa hakuweza kutoa maneno ya, ku, ya kukejeli wala maneno machafu ambayo yangeweza kuudhi upande ule mwingine kwa hiyo mheshimiwa speaker somo tunalopata ni kwa mheshimiwa Haji alikuwa ni mtu eh, mpole mnyenyekevu na aliweza kuhudumia nchi hii bila ya kuwa na mambo yote makubwa ambayo alikuwa anaweza kufanya. Mheshimiwa speaker kama alikuwa kwa ni, 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 ni mtu wa kutaka mengi, angeweza kuwa amepata mambo mengi kabisa kutoka kwa serikali kutokana na nafasi alikuwa nayo kibinafsi. Lakini huwezi kusikia uh, seneta Haji alikuwa na kashfa ya aina yoyote. Na ndio maana alipochaguliwa kuongoza BBI, kila mtu hakuweza kupinga uteuzi ule na alifanya kazi kulingana na vile ambavyo alikuwa amepewa kufanya na mwenzake seneta wako. Kwa mheshimiwa speaker wakati eh, tunaomboleza kifo chake lazima tukubali pia kwamba katika ulimwengu sisi tuko hapa kwa muda maalum ambao Mwenyezi Mungu mwenye ametuwekea na tutakapoondoka lazima tuondoke na, na sifa nzuri za, za wale ambao atakaotufuata uh, Waislamu Mwenyezi Mungu uh, anatuambia katika kitabu chetu takatifu kwamba kila nafsi itaonja mauti kwa hivyo mwenzetu yake ilikuwa jana na sisi tuomba Mwenyezi Mungu aweke roho yake mahali pema peponi na sisi ambao tumebaki tuweze ku, kuiga mfano wake ili tuweze kuishi maisha mazuri hapa duniani na kesho akhera tutakapokuwa kwa Mwenyezi Mungu. Asante Mheshimiwa Speaker kwa kunipa fursa hii. Asante sana. E, ila e, sasa hivi muda umeyoyoma nafikiri tutaongeza huu muda mpaka kila mtu ambaye yuko hapa aweze kuzungumza kwa sababu nina majina matatu tu peke yake kabla sija muita kiongozi walio wachache aweze kujibu kwa hiyo sasa hivi nampa nafasi seneta Abshiro Halake e, ila mheshimiwa mwenye haji unamaanisha kwamba wale wakora ndio wanatumia uh, uh, bodyguards <laughs> kwa sababu vile ambavyo umesema kwamba mheshimiwa haji hangeweza kutumia mheshimiwa Halake una nafasi yako sasa thank you very much mr speaker mr speaker a lot has been said about senator haji but for me, as I grieve for Senator Haji, I'm here to honor his life. A lot has been said about his career, but I want to look at his life that is rich in family, rich in friends, and rich in accomplishment. And I'd like to give my condolences, the condolences of my family, and that of the entire people of Isiolo, to the family of Senator Haji, and directly to Mama Zainab Mumin, his wife, uh, to my sisters Muraya and, and her husband Ismail, to my sister Amina Haji and her husband Ahmed, to my sister Zaytun Haji and her husband retired Colonel, um, Lieutenant Colonel Ali, to my brother Nurdin Haji and my sisters Fauzia and Aisha, 
to my brother Abdul Haji and his wife Saadia Haji, my sister Zuleha, actually my twin sister Zuleha, because Zuleha and I look exactly the same, and therefore she, I, we call, I call her my twin sister Zuleha, Zahra, and Rukia. As you can see, Senator Haji was father of girls. Today, when the speaker was at the, the residence of Senator Haji, he told of a story of when there was a bill or there was a motion on, on, on rape, and Senator Haji could not hold himself and spoke unspeakable words on the floor of this house. It is because of the pain he feels and the protection of his girls. And his girls are not just his biological girls, it's all of us, the girls and women of this country. And this is why he spoke those words. And those words he said was to castrate in Kiswahili and, and it sounded very bad. He said, Katayo Makende. And the reason why he said that is because he loves the women and girls of this country. I know a lot has been said about his security side, but the humility and the love he has for the women and children and girls of this country cannot even be measured. That is the father I know. Mr. Speaker, this loss is greatest for definitely his immediate family, but we want to express our profound sorrow to mama and the children because we share their grief but one thing is that we admire their courage. We are from the house today. All they are doing is accepting God's will and praying. You don't see them crying. In fact, at one point I felt I cried more than them. It's because this is a man of God, has taught his family and brought them up in the ways of Allah. And therefore, they accept his will. Mr. Speaker, you know, this, this Senate is also his extended family. The sadness we feel is for the loss of more than just a colleague and a friend. Baba Mzehaji was our father, especially for me. He looked exactly like my father. When I came to this Senate, I took pictures of my, my late father and I sent it to him, but without saying anything. And he said, Baba, will you put a picture zangu wapi? Sorry, I'm just translating directly. And I said, Baba, those are not your pictures. Those are pictures of my father. And so for me, the loss is the loss of more than a, a colleague, is the loss of a father. He was my mentor. Mze coached me, especially when it came to politics. And we would always say, here in politics, and that you have a future, and you can weave your ethics into the complexities of politics. And that's exactly what he's done. He would be both strong and compassionate. He showed us public service is just not a job. It is labor of love, labor of, labor of compassion. And he did it with distinction. We celebrate him. We celebrate his, his, his service to this country. But one of the things I, I, I remember about him, each time I felt a bit of a pride that I have reached, I'm now a senator, I looked at him and I realized I'm only a speck on a speck. Thank you, Baba, for keeping me grounded. Because you kept reminding me of humility and the value of being grounded because Thank you very much. So in the course of my being here, I worked closely with him and relied on him for guidance and relied on him for grounding because each time I felt now I know it all, even the, the, the order paper is, I mean, the, the, the standing orders are in my head. I just looked at him. He sat there, humble. And when I know the accomplishments, both in family and in career and in service to this nation, I always reminded myself, Abshiro, you're a speck on a speck in, by, in comparison to the giants that are in this house. I'm honored and I celebrate his life. But most of all, I really would like to thank his family, Mama Zainab and my sisters and brothers for giving him to us because it's a great sacrifice that he has really accomplished so much because they must have 
supported him, but my, they must have also missed him a lot as he served all of us. I thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I celebrate my, my father and look forward to really making sure that his legacy of humility, his legacy of leadership of nerve, because he feared nothing, fearless leadership, will be taken forth by those of us that he leaves behind. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. May Allah put him in the best of places where he's put the best of his people. Thank you. Asante sana kwa umbahiri na ufasahabu kubwa sana kwa kutoa hiyo tarifa. Nafikiri umejieleza na nafikiri mimi pia naweza kusema kwamba mwishimu wa halake. Abshiru. Pia nyota yako bado inangaa. Bado uja hakonga dipo. Sa hivi ni tampa na fasi Mashimiwa Saneta Wavijana, Saneta Masi Chabeni. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, uh, for giving me this opportunity to also condole with the family of Senator Haji and the great people of uh, Garissa County. Mr. Speaker, a lot of has been said about uh, Senator Haji. He was indeed a great leader. He was humble, very soft-spoken, but also he was very firm in what he believed in and uh, you know what he did uh, as a leader. And Mr. Speaker, a lot has also been said about his loyalty and respect to authority. And that is something that a, a, young, a young leader as uh, myself, I can pick from him and learn a great deal from uh, his, his style of leadership. Mr. Speaker, he was also very respectful. And when it comes to respect, you know most of the times they say respect is two ways. But when you look at Senator Haji's age and my age, we have a very big age gap. And therefore, you would imagine that I am the one who's supposed to respect him more. But when I in, uh, interacted with him, he really respected me as a young leader. And he always encouraged me, uh, gave me guidance, and I really loved that about him. On another important note, which I think I really found it interesting, that he was really great company. There's a time we traveled to Jordan together. Uh, we accompanied the speaker there. But uh, during dinner, I was amazed that he would crack jokes. And I found myself laughing at his jokes. And therefore, I said to myself, oh my, he's really a great, uh, you know, great company. And I would never imagine that, you know, when I came here as a, uh, as a senator, uh, the first year, I was really, you know, amazed and very respectful, very fearful of him. But when I went, uh, I traveled with him, I realized that, oh, he has a different side of him, that he was really great company. And he loved uh, to crack jokes here and there. And I really admired that. Uh, Mr. Speaker, he was very uh, dedicated to his service. I mean, he served the people of Garissa diligently and the people of Kenya at large with integrity. You know, last, uh, he was made the chairperson of BBI and I think he took it up because uh, of his passion, his love for this country. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, I think he was a true patriot. He wanted the country to remain united and for peace and harmony to prevail. He was a patriot and a servant leader, Mr. Speaker. I think we have lost a great man, a great leader, and I don't think words can even um, you know, uh, make up for what we will miss in him, Mr. Speaker. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, even as a young person, I think I do not want to take this for granted. I am privileged to you know, serve in this house with very many uh, great young men and uh, uh, women in this house. And therefore, as, as Senator Junior said, as young people, we don't take it for granted. We, you know, uh, seek your guidance and you, you sometimes uh, mentor us, uh, lead us in whatever thing we ask you of. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, I really like to take this chance to thank each and every one of them. As a young person in this house, I really have benefited a lot from their wise counsel. And Mr. Speaker, finally, I think I will miss him. I will miss seeing him seated right there in front of me. And then whenever he used to come to the house, he would just do this you know, a gesture of hello, and I would reply and say hello, sir, you know. So I will greatly miss him indeed, but I believe that he has uh, uh, gone to sleep with the angels, and may his soul rest in peace. I thank you. Asante sana, Senator Wavijana, Senator Masi Chabeni. Mezungumza kama kabisa mtoto wake, na ukaelezea wa sifu yako ambao umetupa sasa hivi. Uh, ila tu kidogo mheshimiwa Abshiro Halake nafikiri uligusia kwamba Senator Yusuf Haji ndiye alikuwa wa kwanza kutumia jina scoop lakini kwa kiswahili 
Sasa hivi nampa nafasi Seneta Pareno Judith Ramaita. Another sad day for the year when we lost our Senator Senator Kebaka Kabaka. And here we are again uh, starting the year with another loss uh, for Garissa. Mr. Speaker, Senator Yusuf Haji, the late Yusuf Haji, was my chair uh, in the Security Committee. And I remember when the first time when I came to attend to, to that committee, uh, when we started sitting, the first sitting, and I was late on that day. And I really apologized, and I told him, you know, to me, you're like my dad. I swear you'll never come in and not find me seated. Uh, as you walk in to, to discharge your duty, duties. A duty that I did so dutifully because I could not imagine him coming in and finding that I'm not uh, present in that committee. I always made sure that I was there on time for the respect, just because of the respect that I had for him. And the fact that he was more punctual than all of us looking at the age, uh, looking at his age, it was going to be embarrassing for me to to, to even think of him coming in and not finding some of us ready for committee work. Uh, Mr. Speaker, at the time when he was appointed to, to the BBI, he actually told me, Judith, uh, because you always uh, come in on time, in case, because of my duties at BBI, in case uh, Sakaja, because Sakaja then was the vice chair, any time that Sakaja is not there, please hold brief for me. A duty again I did. Uh, so uh, happily until uh, he was through with his BBI activities and by the time Sakaja left I was still uh, holding him for for the person that I really respected and felt like he was like my dad uh, uh, he was so committed to work you can imagine if you start your sittings at 9 and you would always be there at that time and we respected him for that uh, Mr. Speaker Back then, uh, I was in a school, uh, my secondary school was Kipsigis Girls High School. There is a dormitory by the name Yusuf Haji Dormitory. So when we met here, I told him I, I, I slept in Yusuf Haji Dormitory, and I happened to have been um, uh, the patron of an alumni group of Kipsigis Girls, and we were doing a project to uh, do water for the school. And I came to him and I told him I'm going to that school because we want to start a project uh, for, for water. And I reminded him that there is a time he was so generous that he was named after, that there is, there is a dormitory that is named after him. And he gave me 50,000 shillings. And he told me, please go and make my contributions to, to that project. He was very generous, very straightforward, and a person that, in fact, his own stature would just call you to respect him wherever you met him. So, Mr. Speaker, we miss him. I always remember a day we went to when there were those Lamu attacks and we went there as a security committee. And I was telling him, we are so afraid, you know, this place, these attacks are too much. And he told me uh, all he knows is that somebody only dies once and that there is no, no need for you to, to be afraid. I am sure that, that as he went to his maker, he must have gone in peace. We'll miss him, and may God rest him in eternal peace. Asante sana, Mshmuwa Senator. Samahani. Samahani, Senator Kibure Kindiki Professor. Una, likuwa na kasheshe ya mtandao hapa kidogo. Tafadhali wacha ni kupe na fasi. Samahali tena. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Speaker, my heart is burdened to eulogize Senator Muhammad Yusuf Haji, the late senator of Garissa County. When I joined Senate for the first time in March, 2013, I never imagined in my life that I would have the privilege of sharing this chamber with such a distinguished public servant because Senator Haji, alongside other equally illustrious 
sons and daughters of Kenya, including the leader of minority who is here, including the late Gigi Karaoke, Senator for Laikipia, former, and senators like Raito Mirungi, my neighbor. We never imagined some of us that we will have an opportunity to serve with such great people. But as God had ordained, I had the opportunity for five years uh, to serve with Senator Haji in the first term and also in the second term for nearly four years. I am forever grateful for the moment that I have spent with Senator Haji. Senator Haji taught me that a gifted person is an all-rounder, and God had given him both the hardware and the software of life. The hardware of life, including resolute, uh, focus, uh, resolve, uh, discipline, but he also had the, hard the software of humility and, and, and mentorship, which all of us here attest to his great mentorship uh, in various ways. He was humble and soft, but at the same time firm and focused in his work. I remember how he would stand up for me when I was the Senate Majority Leader, and I would constantly remind him, Senator Haji, you cannot stand up for me. Why? Number one, you are the age of my father. Number two, I don't think I even measure up to a tenth of the accomplishments you have made. And he kept on telling me until I gave up. He told me, you see, it is not about age or experience. It's about authority. He would, I would even go with him to state house on, on state functions, and I would see how even the head of state was a bit uncomfortable at the kind of respect and humility Senator Haji would show to authority. So this is a man who uh, God used in a great way to serve this country in the public service, but also in politics as minister, member of parliament, and senator. I remember him, Mr. Speaker, as one of the senators who would stay up very late into the night when we had a motion, a government-sponsored motion, and Senator Haji would uh, not, never leave the chamber without seeking the permission of the majority leader. He would, I would sometimes excuse him to go and pray or even stay at a nearby facility like Intercontinental Hotel and only call him when it was about time for voting. I will forever treasure the time we spent together and words are not enough to mourn this great man. May the soul of Senator Mohammed Yusuf Haji rest in eternal peace. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Asante sana, Professor, kwa hiyo tawasiku yako ya Tanzia Rambirambi. Sasa hivi na mpa nafasi kiongozi walio wachache ya weze kujibu. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, nearly every senator has spoken in tribute to a uh, departed uh, colleague, Senator Haji. And, and I must say, you know, this cannot be the last word. I think each one of us, even given an hour or two hours or three hours, they will never be short of anything to say about this great man. But I am hopeful that uh, what we have said today in this chamber is a reflection of our thoughts and our appreciation of his commitment uh, and life of service to the nation uh, called Kenya. And I want to conclude by saying that, uh, you know, there have been some remarks that have come to the floor uh, about uh, Senator Haji having some misgivings um, particularly about BBI. I know Senator Haji very well. He would never, never, never put his hand to something he didn't agree with. And he would never, never, never uh, stop from expressing his views loudly, but in the right forum. So I want to end this debate by saying that uh, may the soul of Mohammed Yusuf Haji rest in eternal peace. Uh, and I beg to move.
Asante sana. Sasa ningelipenda kupendekeza rasmi kwamba uh, hii hoja ya kwamba bunge la seneti limeweza kutoa rambi rambi zake rasmi kutokana na kifo kilichotokea tarehe 15 mwezi wa Februari mwaka wa 2021 cha mheshimiwa mwenda zake Muhammad Yusuf Haji seneta wa kaunti ya Garissa na ambaye amekuwa mwenyekiti wa kamati ya kudumu ya usalama wa kitaifa na pia masuala ya nchi za kigeni na ulinzi na pia kwamba tuweze kuweka katika kumbukumbu za hili bunge e, changio zake zote na katika utumishi wa umma ambao ambazo zimekuwa ka, zaidi ya miongo sita na kuweza kutambua rasmi vile alivyokuwa na hadhi kubwa na heba kubwa e, ambayo watu walimtunuku watu kutoka tabaka mbalimbali mbali, na katika vyama tofauti